Days, yeah, <laughs> where they didn't know the words, so they just sang the riffs. <laughs> the other day, before I get into the whole intro stuff, the other day I'm on, uh, I'm stuck in a YouTube vortex. Uh huh. Ah, uh, the rabbit hole. And uh, Beavis and Butthead came up where they're watching the Bee Gees jive talking. Nice. <laughs> and then it gets to this weird bass line, and Butthead just kind of, you know, they do the look at each other and it goes back, and then it cuts to the video again, and he just starts going for the rest of the video. And I don't know why that was so funny, but that's how they finished out the whole uh, video viewing process. Dude, Beavis and Butthead was awesome back in the day. Like, rewatching those episodes is like you, so many things like you missed, like watching it as a kid because you were just like, you know, trying to sneak it in when your parents right, were yeah. like not letting you watch it and stuff. And I don't know, it's just kind of crazy. I liked uh, MC 900 Foot Jesus. That was the. the, the if one I only song. had a brain. Yeah, that was you the know one what? song. I'm that, making uh, a note right now. <laughs> that is next week's opener. There you go. Or like the one where they did uh, Ween Push the Daisies. <laughs> Yeah, that was a great one, too. Yeah. That's the one. Push him up. The 900-foot Jesus is where Butthead was like, stop at Beavis, and he was going to like, start beating him up, and he just kept going. Bum, 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 yeah. bum. <laughs> Anyway, uh, anyway, let's introduce the program here. Sure. My name is Eric Nagel. The program is It's Eric Nagel. 866-969-1969 is the phone number. Joining me each and every week without fail is my co-host, Matt O.G. Hello, sir. How are you, sir? Well, it was almost with fail this week. It was almost <laughs> with fail for our big two-hour debut. Uh, we'll get into that in just a second. And uh, over to my right here is my buddy Gills. Hey, how's it going, everyone? How are you? Gillbase on the Twitter and Instagram. And uh, Geek Stuff OG for Matt on the Twitter and the Instagram That's there right. if you want to check everything me. out. Love me. Uh, you could follow me if you'd like. Sure. First, uh, let's start with a couple of thank yous. This is a great opportunity it that is. we have been given. So, of course, thanks to uh, Greg Opie Hughes That's right. uh, for uh, green lighting this as the corporate term and uh, actually believing that we could do a show here. So let's... Uh, See how bad we're going to tank this for two hours. Oh, we'll be fine. Uh, Dan, oh, let's, I almost said Dan, but uh, Don Wicklin as well. Uh, thank you for uh, his help in doing whatever he does for this show and for the channel. So thank you to him. And uh, we'll be moving on a little later on in the program today. We're going to talk to Zachary Quinto. That's right. You may know him as Skylar from Heroes. You may know him as Spock from the reboot 
of Star Trek. You may. May I also know him from two seasons of American Horror Stories. That's right. I yep. forgot his character's name from was, both seasons. Uh, he was the rubber man in the first Well, he was not really technically the rubber man. He was uh, like the boyfriend in the first season. Right. Um, who bought like first the rubber was, suit. With, with it was the like a haunted house. house. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then he played um, Dr. Threadson in, in uh, Asylum, and he was a serial killer. That sounds almost like a, um, like a, like a ska song. Yeah, <laughs> Dr. Threadson. Dr. Threadson. Ooh, pick it up, suit, pick it up, pick it up. Big horn section. Um, but he's in uh, the program right now called The Slap on NBC. We'll talk to him about that. And also, he's uh, in the new Hitman video game that's coming out soon. Right. So I, uh, we'll, we'll bring that up uh, as well. Uh, if you've been watching The Slap, anybody here? Uh, uh, I have not been I've watching I saw the 15-second part with The Slap, and I was like, all right, I saw it. And then I just kind of turned it off. It's like when you watch a movie and you, they say the title. Yeah. You're like, okay, now I'm done with the movie. Exactly. Um, so if you haven't seen The Slap, if you listen to Sam Roberts' show, he's been covering this for the last few weeks. Right. Uh, very in-depth. And it's actually been pretty funny what he's, he's been talking about, how ridiculous the <laughs> show is, uh, and the concept for it. So is it a show or is it a mini series? Uh, like, is I it keep saying have, like, show, but it's a, like... it's a it's a special event slash mini series. Okay. okay. So uh, that's going on. Because I don't see that having a lot of line. How do you do this? Sla- what's the slap season two? It's the kick. Is yeah, like, like season what is, two. Yeah, he falls down the stairs and like hits people on his way down. <laughs> the slap is pretty much what starts off the whole um, saga as far as uh, there's a court battle and there's people cheating on each other. It's and, kind of the breakdown of a family, isn't it? Th- yeah, and there's obnoxious Ugh. children who pretty much deserve the slap and sure. deserve more than just the slap and uh, have not received it from hippie parents. Fair enough. So there's, I think we're four episodes into that. You can check it out on Hulu or um, NBC.com has the most recent episode. You can check that out. Uh, we're not going to go too much into that until uh, we speak to Zachary. But uh, if, if you're curious, go to the, to the On Demand. You can check out Sam's show for the past few weeks. He's done a lot of coverage on that and probably better than we can do as far as that particular subject is concerned. Also, we'll talk to uh, Jason Isaacs. Right. How do we know Jason Isaacs for the uh, for the mass public out there? Lucius Malfoy, Draco Malfoy's father from the Harry Potter film Ooh. franchise. He was also in a show that I enjoyed um, a few years ago, but it it only went one season. Was uh, Awake on NBC? Awake. It was about a guy who was in a car accident, and you couldn't. He was like drifting between two realms, where one where his wife is dead. And the other, his wife is alive, but then the, then his kid is dead, but his kid is alive. And the is other that the one, one where, like he like every day he wakes up and it's like he doesn't know he which doesn't like know. body he's going to be in type thing or right. whatever it is. Okay, I remember yeah. seeing the trailer. Uh, did for about it. ten episodes, I think. Okay, and uh, I enjoyed it, but it, it, they didn't renew it. But he was in that. Uh, he's in uh, this new show called Dig on USA, which oh, I, I, yeah. it just I debuted last cool. night. Uh, it, it's a weird mix of. It's got, and they even reference Indiana Jones in it. Sure. So, like, they're acknowledging that that's what they're doing, but it's that. It's also a little bit of uh, Da Vinci Code. That's what um, I was going to say. Based on the trailer I saw, it was like Indiana Jones meets Da Vinci, da Vinci Code. Code. National and, and, Treasure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some of that, too. Uh, you should definitely check that out as well. It premiered last night on USA. Uh, very good. And USA is taking some risks, they're going the FX route. Uh, there's some uh, slight profanity, there's some nudity. Ooh. Uh, which is a big change between uh, from what they were doing with Suits and right. Psych but and I li- Burn Notice. But I like those shows. <laughs> and like- any other shows that they could put WWE wrestlers <laughs> into? <laughs> I think I think USA has had some pretty good programming for a while now. Psych was one of my favorite shows. I was really upset They're when that They're not bad shows. Yeah. People love them. I just, I never remember to see them or they're... The only time that I have seen them is when they came on right after Raw on Monday night. You would have loved Psych, too, because it was a lot of pop culture in Psych. It's all over Netflix. I see it's on the banner there. And Burn Notice I used to watch for a little while because it had uh, Bruce Campbell in it. Of course. Bruce Campbell's awesome. How could you not watch anything that Bruce Campbell is involved in? Evil Dead coming up soon. I cannot. Wait. Oh yeah, the uh, the Netflix series. The Netflix series. I'm yeah, very man. interested to see what they do with that. They're they're probably going to go like the Evil Dead two like Army of Darkness kind of like kitschy like kind of goofy route. That I don't think it's going to be as dark as like Evil Dead like the first one. So the premise that I've heard thus far is that uh, based on some of the casting is that. Uh, He's got two other people that he's fighting with. Okay. And I think one of them is kind of like his sidekick that's kind of like reinvigorating him to take on the crusade against the Deadites because they're coming back. You know what it sounds like? Did you see My Name is Bruce? Yes, I did. Okay. So it sounds like 
my name is Bruce. <laughs> really, okay. I mean, but I like that, that kind of angle, which if you haven't seen My Name is Bruce, it's kind of a... It's like a pokes fun at himself and like all of the roles that he's kind of played in right. these horror movies, but he has to be the hero and save the day type of situation. Right. It's, he actually has to almost become Ash yeah. in the film to, to save the day. And it's, it's very funny and it's, it's very tongue in cheek and it's very Bruce Campbell, but I think they're going to, yes, it's not going to be scary. It's going to be much more army of darkness than, that's what I was than thinking. evil dead, but I'm okay with that. I'm totally fine with that. That's yeah. the better of the yeah. you know, Sam Raimi evil deads anywhere. The later ones. I mean, I, I totally love the first one and everything that it, that it did, but the second one was just like, all right, yeah, this is more fun. Since we're all big Bruce Campbell fans yes. in this room here, I uh, remember years ago when they were, uh, Announcing the Freddy vs. Jason movie was actually going to happen and come out. Remember there was a big campaign to have Ash be a part of it? There was. Yep. Anybody really interested in having Ash in that movie? In in Freddy vs. Jason? Yeah. Did it seem did it make sense at all other than people just wanted it? It right. makes no sense to me. But. So they actually did uh, a comic book of it. I think it was maybe Boom Studios or Dynamic Studios. I forget the the, the company that did it at the time, um, but it was Freddy versus Jason versus Ash, uh, and it was funny. It was you know Freddy is kind of back from the dream realm. Jason is newly revived, and Ash is like, I, no, I got to take both of you out. I got to protect the S Mart and all that. And it was it was very silly. Okay, it was like silly Freddy. So picture like Freddy in the later years. Jason didn't say much ever, uh, and then it was. It was Army of Darkness Ash. So. And like sarcastic yeah, Ash. It was funny. It was cute. I don't know if it would have worked on film, but it worked in a comic book. Yeah, I don't know about that. All right. Well, just wanted to throw that out there. Sure. Um, so, yeah, as I was saying, we will talk to Jason Isaacs uh, in a little bit about Dig. You should definitely right. check that out. That's where we started. Oh, that's and, right. <laughs> uh, trying to bring it around. Uh, so, two hour show today. Right. Uh, it's uh, 7 to 9 p.m. on the East Coast. And then for those listening on the West Coast, 4 to 6 p.m., which is afternoon drive, as uh, Rich Voss likes to point out all the time. <laughs> right. And uh, so th this is a great opportunity. Uh, almost a little tarnished today because almost. of uh, stupid people. Yes. Stupid drivers. Indeed. The weather and pointless traffic. Yeah, it was just it, the perfect storm of horseshit right. to screw us up is really what it was. Um, we're in the tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. No stranger to cold weather, no stranger to uh, snowstorms. Now, people who live in, uh, we'll say, the middle of the country and up in Canada, Montana, North Dakota, those kind of areas, where they just get their ass kicked by snow. Like, a, a storm will give you 20 inches at one point. Right. Right. So they're going to laugh at us. It's just like us laughing at people in Florida that, that they don't know how to drive in the rain, and it rains there all the time. Right. right. So... We had a uh, we had snow hit yesterday yep. uh, in the northeast here, um, out by where Matt and I are. We got about six to eight inches of snow, <sighs> but it did warm up a bit. They cleared the streets. Now it's just kind of icy, but it's really not that bad. But not it's, bad at all, right. really. Getting on uh, ninety five, trying to get into Manhattan, people drive in clusters when there's it's like four to six cars together and there's nothing ahead of them until the next cluster right and they don't let you pass they don't, yeah, they, all yeah. three lanes right really aggravating you're you, and i'm hitting the high beams i'm hitting the horn because i'm the obnoxious driver who likes to speed down the highway you're the right driver i am <laughs> i'm the guy who learned from mr kumia that if all else fails you drive on the medium that's right so um cluster after cluster of people just not moving for no reason weather conditions are fine highways are cleared I started to notice before I picked up Matt and after I picked up Matt that in this cluster of people who were driving slow or not knowing what they were doing, we started to see a pattern. That's right. And the pattern is an old stereotype. Sure is. And it's not a racial stereotype. It's not. It's an old uh, 1950s Madison Avenue kind of stereotype that women do not know how to drive. That's right. It was a gaggle of ladies. Rut row. <laughs> and... Uh, I hate to reinforce this stereotype, but it's right. <laughs> tonight, it's tonight, tonight it was, was right. so right because everywhere, everyone in front of us was a, 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 of all age demographics, uh, middle age, elderly, young people, all don't know how to drive, pissing me off. I'm, I'm, I, this is where I really love Magneto because I wish I had that power. <laughs> I could pick up their car and just <laughs> throw it off the side of the highway. <laughs> 
It was it was just awful, and it was it, they hit all the major like the little old lady who can't see over the steering wheel, the lady with the really big thick glasses. It was terrible. It was, ter- and it's so frustrating when you have you know something to do like maybe a, a radio job. show, yeah, and and you you're watching the the minutes tick by, and you're like, what the fuck? Just please, just please go, just a little bit, scoot over, and the, and to top that off, because we're doing the longer show and starting at a new time earlier, right. Um, it, it throws off the routine that uh, Matt and I have had from Friday nights and even on Saturday nights when we used to drive in. Matt would uh, meet up with me. We'd both drive in together. And Matt works a regular job during the day. So I he do. can only get out at a certain point. So I have to go and we tried it today to meet up, which we're going to have to make other arrangements yeah. now. But I tried to meet up with him and, and got him. And then we were trying to drive in. And it was ridiculous. There was no reason for no. any of this. And... It was just pissing me off. It's been a crappy week. Uh, earlier in the week, if you listen to the Opie and Jim Norton show, our studio died. That's right. So that was a, a lot oh, of stress man. and aggravation. And then they only got the studio up uh, Wednesday. I'm still waiting for this thing to fall apart because uh, <laughs> the uh, you know the engineering crew did a good job uh, and race to get things done. But I think a lot of this stuff here, it's not the new studio that we were hoping for yet. But they did their best to piece this all together. They I'm hoping it lasts. It. But you know. Murphy's Law, is it Murphy's Law, where what can go wrong will go wrong, I think might be in play here, and I'm waiting for this to crap out on our two-hour debut here. So how did it break? It just stopped working? Like, the power stopped working, or it just (coughs) physically just broke? Without getting too technical, this board is a digital board, not an analog board like a lot of radio stations have. Digital board, there's a computer that connects to this, and there's also a mainframe that's sort of the middleman to this. This doesn't matter to anybody listening, but since you asked... uh, (laughs) Communication between those three dropped down, and there was a lot they had to work on, and uh, but they got it done, and here we are. Awesome. But, so there was that. Uh, there was the two snowstorms this week. <sighs> uh, trying to shovel out ice. This morning, I got up. <laughs> this morning. Um, list, uh, on Friday mornings, every now and then, is the Bennington Show. Right. With uh, Ron Bennington and Gail Bennington, as they say, no relation. And I come in to do that show in the morning. So I get up. Uh, I get out early, and I get out to my car, and it's covered in snow. So I'm like, all right, I'll scrape the car off. All the snow's gone. There is about an inch of ice all over my car. <laughs> so now no. I'm sitting there with the butt end of the scraper, almost like like a hammer, trying to break everything off, get the ice off, and I can't get the car doors open. So I have to open the the, the uh, hatch in the back of my car, my my SUV there, crawl through the car... Only barely got one side of the window scraped, so I had to back the car into the middle of the street oh, Jesus. because the right side of me was just mountains of snow. I couldn't get to it. So now I have my car running in the middle of the street. I had to lean over the hump and kick with both feet to get the doors open because <laughs> they wouldn't even unlock. A little bit of hot water. So I'm just yeah, cursing just a tiny bit. <laughs> and screaming and scraping all this stuff off and kicking car doors open. And uh, again, trying to get to work this morning. It was just the same thing. People driving in little clusters because they're afraid and they don't know what the, the fuck they're doing. Where am I going with this? I had a really shitty week. But people listening don't really care about listening to people on the radio mm-hmm. having a shitty week. Not at because all. Because they had a shitty week. And they work, uh, a lot of people work worse jobs than what we do, and I understand that. So what I'm going to do is I tweeted out earlier that we had some prizes to give away. That's right. Um, we have two uh, Funko toys, awesome which we're toys. big fans of these toys, from the Better Call Saul uh, series. Well, nice. technically they're Breaking Bad labeled figures because the Saul figures haven't come out, but they're the characters that are in Breaking uh, Better Call Saul. So we have a figure of Saul Goodman played by Bob Odenkirk, signed. Right, and we have a uh, figure of Michael. I can never remember his last name. Ermin Trout. Ermin Trout. Thank you. P- who is portrayed by Jonathan Banks? Signed. So we have those two here. So we're going to take your stories. If you, I know you had a shittier week than I had here. Uh, <laughs> it was your I birthday wanna... this week too, right, Eric? Was it that shitty too, or no? Well, it was shitty because of the studio stuff. Oh, okay, gotcha. that that made it shitty. But I got to go to Monday Night Raw, which we'll talk about later. Ooh. Matt and I went. Uh, so I'm sure you had a shitty week. Well, let me hear your stories, and we'll put you in the running to give away these two figures. Sound good? Sounds good. Eight six six nine six nine one nine six nine. If you want to call in with your shitty stories there, and uh, we'll get that thing going as well. Uh, let's talk to uh, Bill in Pennsylvania. Bill, how are you? Okay. See, 
<laughs> See, you, that's why we can't have anything nice. This is why we can't have nice things. Uh, no, that's, that's fine. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, it's just whatever. If that's what he wants to do, that's 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 his prerogative. Apparently, there's a T-shirt with no relation to me. Apparently, maybe you want to go buy that as well. There you go. Uh, let's go to uh, Lee in Atlanta. Lee. Oh well, I wasn't actually calling to be part of this, but since you asked, or funny that you should ask, um, I'm getting a divorce, and I have a mother that lives with me, and we have a dog for her, a small Chihuahua. And all of a sudden, I got a letter from the lawyer saying they now want the Chihuahua, which the day after we got the letter, the dog died. <laughs> That's rough. Wow. Well, it was a Chihuahua. Now, what I'm trying to figure out, though, it, I mean, if he's getting a divorce, is that a bad thing or is it a good thing? Maybe it's a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see. Uh, Garrison in Wisconsin. This is where the center of the country is going to yell at us for, you know, they right. deal with snow worse than uh, than we have to deal with it. Garrison, how are you? No, actually, I'm not going to yell at you. You actually had a lot more snow than we've had in Wisconsin this year, believe it or not. How is that well, possible? I, I have no idea, but it's been frigid cold. Polar but. vortex. It was six <laughs> degrees this morning when I left. Ooh. It was yeah, nine when I left. You got a couple degrees on me. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, anyway, I've been a truck driver for over 20 years from Wisconsin. Always have driven in, you know, cold, snow, ice, everything else. I'm, the, you know, I'm the one that everybody hates where you are because we go flying by at 70 when everybody else is doing 30 and just completely white out everything. Right. But the day before yesterday, I got to drive in a foot of snow, completely unplowed, not maintained, in Kentucky and Tennessee. And if you want to talk about a joyride, oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> These little clusters are long, long clusters with nobody anywhere remotely near. Three lanes wide, and everybody has to be in every lane and doing 20 miles an hour. No, that, that's just not right. Do you know that in New Jersey now, um, the, the unofficial name is the left lane dick, but you know, you're going to actually get pulled over for that. <laughs> you can get pulled over that for New Jersey if you're, if you're hogging the left lane. There's you not know, many. Oh, go ahead. I, oh, I was going to say, I, I actually, with the semi, have done the Anthony Cumia on the shoulder <laughs> passing people <laughs> in the snow. I, I will white you out and make you just completely blind and fuck everybody behind me just because... Somebody needs to learn. You leave that nice foot of snow on top of your trailer, too, so that every car behind you for the next three miles is just blizzarded out. It, it flies off like a sheet of ice okay, and just my cracks only the windshield. For that is, there's not like a ladder that goes to the top of the trailer. We don't carry 15-foot ladders around with us so we can go up there and shovel it off. Well, that's your problem, not mine. <laughs> no, it's not my problem. It's behind me. I can't imagine there's many cops hiding out on the highways in Wisconsin. There's nothing there. No. <laughs> so you get to get you get away with doing whatever you want as a trucker up there. Pretty much. Pretty much. It's just, it's just a open, vast wasteland. So yeah. Okay. That was that was my story for the week. Anyway. I'm gonna. Uh, you know what? I'll I'll qualify that. Uh, I'll put you on hold. We'll get your information. All right. Thanks. All right. So he is uh, Garrison is in the running there on line three. Uh, let's go to uh, Gordon in Richmond. Gordon. Yeah, my uh, cat ate three of my Funko figures this week. Uh, my <laughs> Batman, my Joker, and my Loot Crate exclusive Batman Joker mix. And they also, for the third time, destroyed and ate the 3D uh, puzzle I'm working on for Chicago. Oh. So, pretty crappy. Does that qualify? I, you know what? I've I've had cats eat toys before, and it's a miserable fucking experience. Like how how eaten was it? Like digested, uh, eaten, just, or just like gone. they just ripped it apart? No, the ears are gone, the feet are gone. I mean, I can't even stand them up anymore. Jesus, I, I think I think that qualifies. That qualifies. He goes, he goes into the running. I didn't think cats least. did that. That seems more of a dog thing. Oh no, I I have. I mean. I have toys with capes because I'm that guy, and uh, a lot of them have uh, cat teeth holes in them uh, from years of being chewed and brutalized. So now that now that room is off limits to the cats. Yeah. All right, Gordon, uh, we'll put you on hold here. We'll have you qualify for that as well. Uh, Gordon's on line seven. Let's go down to Georgia. And Chris, how are you? Hey, Eric. What's up, man? What's going on? Uh, just want uh, to try to get my name in the uh, in the running. Uh, I uh, 
deliver gas. I drive a truck. I deliver gasoline. I got sent to a store in Savannah. Actually, they told me that the store was in Fort Wentworth, which is about 12 miles north of Savannah. Okay. Uh, get to the store, realize it's the wrong one. It's pouring down rain, and it's at, at rush hour, and uh, Savannah traffic, or traffic in that area is pretty bad. So I have to backtrack all the way back down to Savannah, get to the store, pouring down rain once again. Never been to the store before. Start dropping the fuel, which is diesel fuel. Uh, turns out uh, I'm dropping it in the tank for the uh, automobile diesel. Ooh, and no, no. come to find out, well, that's not a big deal. It's not like it's a bad mixture or anything like that. But um, the what I'm supposed to be dropping in the truck is on the back side of the lot. So I have to go back there, finish dropping, pouring down rain, once again, get stuck in traffic. Turned around today, got sent back to the same store, just sat in 45-minute traffic because of a, uh, another wreck down uh, around that area, and I just got back to the yeah, So I've had a pretty shitty two days. And possibly an environmental disaster on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> At least it's like he wasn't pouring the diesel like in the dump station, right. you know, when oh, people yeah, RVs. The, the <laughs> I mean, I, it, it was diesel into diesel. It was for, it was for auto diesel, like, you know, diesel powered pickups. No, no, we got it. I spill electricity yeah. onto my electricity all the time. It's fine. <laughs> right. All right, Chris. Well, uh, we'll have. All right, I'll, I'll have you qualify there. Let me put you on hold, uh, Chris, on eight. Uh, we're going back to Wisconsin, boys, and say hello to Steve. Ooh. Hey, Eric. How you doing? Good. How are you, sir? I had to sit on 65 in no in yeah in Kentucky, some damn hillbillies listening to a guy telling me why they call it the bluegrass state and talking about his fucking family all day. <laughs> that sounds horrible. <laughs> Did he have all his teeth? Hack. <laughs> no, he took them out. E Rock. He took them fucking out. <laughs> <laughs> he took them out to tell you the story and then put them back in. Yes, and he's like, "Do you have anything to eat?" I said. I'm in a sedan. Why in the hell would I give you things to eat? Now I know I sound like a hillbilly, but I'm not. No, you don't. You don't have that twang. He took the cake. He rocked. He was the dumbest guy I've ever talked to in my life. I, I love the fact that he took his teeth out to talk to you instead of uh, putting them in to speak correctly. He was whistling too much or something uh, like that. Terrible. I'm I'm torn for life. All right, Steve, uh, you qualify as well. I'll put you on there. A lot of people qualifying here. That's all right. People we'll just... had really shitty weeks, and they got to get it out. Sure. And uh, we'll pick... Because uh, we'll you know what? We'll do the shitty week thing here for this first segment, and then we got to talk to Zachary Quinto. Okay. And then we'll figure out what to do to give away uh, the second one uh, when we come back after that. Sounds good. We'll, we'll come up with something there. Uh, Mike in Virginia. Mike, how are you? Good, well, how about yourself? Good. Good. Uh, so last night... Just trying to run, run, run the mill kind of thing. Uh, game night with some friends. Uh, I had the same problem you did with uh, my doors in the ice, and it wouldn't open up. Finally, I was able to get one door open. Um, I'm on the way to my friend's place, uh, and I'm a smoker. Light that up. Um, and then my window is frozen shut, so it won't open up. So now I'm trying to scrounge around, figure out how I want to, like, I don't like to smoke with my uh, windows closed. But anyway, long story short, I get there. Uh, it's my friend's place. We have our game night, uh, and my friend's got a pet ferret. They had some seizures and they died on the last night, so that kind of just ruined the whole game night. Then we ran into people outside who are going to buy some alcohol. I didn't really want to drive, and I loaned him ten bucks, and he runs off with it. So that was my night last night. Wait, uh, I'm, I'm missing part of this. It was a little hard to hear. Was the ferret in the car? <laughs> no, no. The ferret was at the house once I got there for game night. Because when he said he couldn't get the door open and he was smoking, I thought he, maybe like he asphyxiated the <laughs> ferret. I was like, wow, he may win this. <laughs> Sorry, I can't, can't lie about it being that bad. All right, uh, I'll put you on hold there, too. Uh, was the ferret involved in game night? I'm kind of confused the, now. Well, the like, ferret I really died and ruined game night. I know. Geez, like what was the ferret doing? I would use it for the new Monopoly piece. Dead ferret. Dead ferret. Dead ferret. Like, whack a ferret. Uh, oh, whack a ferret. That sounds like an excellent game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or do perfection. Put it in there and shoot the ferret up in the air when the timer goes off. Uh, Jesse in Chicago, how are you, sir? Hey, what's up, E Rock? I have had some shitty weeks. I uh, last Friday I uh, lost my job of five years. What did you do? Uh, I worked at a car dealership. I like worked on the cars. Oh, okay. you were a mechanic. And, uh, yeah. Okay. So I did. So I got fired last last week, and then Monday, um, my brother-in-law works at another company. But so he said, "You need like a CDL license." 
So I went to the DMV. I rented a truck. CDL. I'd never drove a tr- driven a truck before. So I go there. It's three hundred dollars to rent the truck. Of course, first time I fail. <laughs> so God damn it! So now I have to go drop the truck back off. Signed up again for it uh, on Thursday yesterday. I go to my, I uh, make an appointment at eight a.m. Uh, apparently, there's only three people working at the DMV, so I had to stay there from eight a.m. And I finally got out at two o'clock, and I couldn't leave all morning because God forbid they call my name and I'm not there. Right. I had nothing to eat all morning. I finally take the test. I pass it, so I had to spend about another three hundred dollars. So I get back, drop the truck off, and then I had two tickets on my car waiting. So, <laughs> so oh there goes man, my, uh, my shitty weeks there. So you're out six hundred bucks, no job, two tickets, two tickets to paradise, and, and you got a CDL license. I don't know that that's a. Uh... <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. terrible. Yeah, I, th- I think you qualify, but uh, you definitely did not come out on top in this scenario. No, but so now I'm looking for a job. Well, uh, if you're in the Chicago area, <laughs> you can. And do you have a Twitter at least, Jess? A what? Do you have Twitter? Yeah. What's your Twitter? Uh, it's J underscore D underscore and then I, I, I. All right, make it easy for everybody. Uh, J underscore D underscore I I I. Uh, Jesse needs a job. If you're in the Chicago area and you're uh, looking for a mechanic or something, maybe you can help him out. Uh, I think that qualifies. I'm going to put you on hold there. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Rock. All right, hang on there. Let's go. Let's go down to Texas and speak to Dennis. How are you, sir? I'm good, Eric. How you doing? We're in Texas, are you? Uh, well, I'm in between uh, Dallas and Houston today, but uh, I'm in Dallas. Is it true those cities really hate each other? They do. Yeah. So. I have buddies that live in uh, Houston, and they all say how much they hate everybody from Dallas. Yeah, yeah. So what I had to do was... He doesn't care. Was, yeah, I'm shooting my week was, you know, I was on a business trip going from Dallas to San Francisco. Flew out on Tuesday with a couple guys from work. We had a big presentation the next day. We land in San Francisco and decided to go to dinner uh, down by the water, by the Embarcadero. Found a great parking spot near Pier 39 on the street. We're all excited. And it's after the meter reading time. We're high fiving each other in the street with how great our parking spot is. Walk a block to dinner, come back, and as I walk around the front of the rental car, with an SUV, like an expedition or something, I see glass all over the sidewalk. Some assholes had smashed the window in the back of the uh, rental car open and taken all of our luggage out. I mean, they took oh, our, man. Double, our, our, our briefcases. Put our computers and all of our work in it, and then they took our clothes. I mean, they took like our clothes. So it's not like so, they went through the stuff. They actually just took the cases and left with they, them. They, they took everything. So what's funny about it is we, we went to the police department to file a report. As we go in there, we see three other dudes in there with their sport coats and their jeans on from Atlanta, and they were parked, parked like a block away from us. They got hit too, but I guess those guys didn't have room for their suitcases because they have all all of our fucking suitcases. So they just took their briefcase. Oh, I thought it, I swear I thought he was saying when we saw these guys in the sport coats, like they were wearing our clothes. Yeah. You know, we found those assholes. Well, well, you know, that's what sucks about it is you travel as much as I do. You know, you have everything perfect. You know, you have your noise canceling headphones. You know, I had the perfect pair of nail clippers. Right. Everything is set exactly right. And I flew home, you know, back to. You lost Texas me at nail clippers. You know, with, you know, with nothing but a little bag of shitty bathroom toiletries I had to buy at Walmart. You know, and not have anything else with me. You know, just a, a shell of the savvy business traveler I was. All right. Just twenty four hours before. Well, that does suck, and I do, I do think that qualifies. I don't know how a signed uh, action figure is going to make up for you losing all your valuables, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll at least put you in the running there, sir. All right, thanks, sir. All right, uh, hang on there for Dennis in Texas. Um, we're trying to go all over the place here, especially if there's any other West Coast people. We'd like to talk to them as well. But let's go to Iowa, because who wants to go to Iowa and talk to Eric? How are you, Eric? Hey, good, Mr. Nagel. How are you guys? I am fu- You sound like a Bond villain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. So, anyways, I'm uh, working on uh, like November. I uh, have a slip disc and... Uh, my job has kept me at home. They they don't have any extra work for me. So finally, the workman's comp lady decides I'm going to go work at this thrift store for 40 hours a week. Right. And fold clothes, which is cool. You know, it's all donations, so it's, it's good for my head and everything. I'm feeling better about things. So I start 
uh, on one of them internet sites, I'm talking to this girl. Actually, I'm talking to two of them, and it's kind of getting wild. I'm feeling better. I think I can perform maybe with my bad back. So I decided to meet this girl. Now, she's pretty nice looking. She's my age. I'm 54 years old. She's about 50. And not bad looking for a 50-year-old. Okay. Can look good in a bikini, I guess. And uh, So I decided to meet her at the mall after my shift at this thrift store. And I go in there. All my pictures on the Facebook page I showed her had me with the beard. But I've shaved off the beard, and I haven't added any pictures. So I'm in there without the beard, and I walk, I'm walk. i walking behind this lady, and she's kind of big. Like, way too big for me. Right, this she's fat. With, she has a penis. <laughs> yeah. She didn't have a penis, but she could have, who knows? I don't know. There was, she could have been hiding anything underneath there. But, uh, yeah, she was... Uh, so what happened? 300 pounds heavier. She was about 200 pounds heavier than what she actually was. Um, no, so, I just ate my Arby's and watched her eat her Chinese food, and I got up and left. Well, that's the smart decision to make, my friend. Uh, it's called... In the back of the day, it was called MySpace Voodoo. Uh, <laughs> call it what you will now and throw the voodoo on it. But, uh, yeah, women love to angle uh, the photos the right way or... Uh, be pretty deceiving on these dating sites or uh, apps or whatever the uh, the kids are using nowadays. Um, she promised me a good massage for my back and promised to take care of me. And yeah, you know, even that was look. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure on the she, I'm on the fence. On I'm this sure one. if yeah. you actually went and talked to her, I'm sure she would have done all of those things. But you just watched her eat Chinese food and then you <laughs> left. <laughs> so uh, we'll never know if that was going to happen That's or right. not. But. Well, uh, I, I couldn't. I didn't bring a two by four. I'm, I'm strap on my butt so I wouldn't fall in. I think we're you're good, Eric. I'm unfortunately you're going to be the first one we're passing yeah, on this. I, I, we have to pass. God damn it! I'm sorry, man, but thank you for calling. Uh, let's go to. If she had a penis. Uh, that definitely, like a, definitely would have been on the list. That was like but, a Grandpa Simpson story. I was yeah, like, where's he going with this? And we put an onion on our belt because that was the style at the time. <laughs> <laughs> what was the thing with the bees? <laughs> I wore a twenty-pound beard of bees. No, no, for the coins. Remember, give me two bees for a nickel. Oh, give, or yeah, something. give me two bees for a for uh, a. We nickel. just ruined a yeah. perfectly good. good yeah. So let's go to South Carolina and talk to Mark. Mark, how are you? Mr. Nagel, doing quite well, considering. How are you, sir? Uh, we're doing okay. You got a shitty week. No, the the week has been great, and I thought I would top it off by taking my wife and my daughter and her girlfriend. My daughter is uh, eight years old, and she's in the Scouts and. Take them out to dinner. Uh, went to Olive Garden, which eh, I know, but for the shitty town we live in, hey, that's the best we can do. Look, don't knock unlimited soup and, and uh, salad and breadsticks there, my friend. Word. <laughs> True. Well, the problem started when uh, we're there ordering or getting our food. Our waitress comes up, and, of course, she has a nice, thick Jersey accent, which that's fine. That's not an issue. The issue came when she looked at my daughter and said, how old are you, sweetie? And she said... Eight. She said, well, I have three kids. I had four, but my seven-year-old died. Oh, Jesus. She said, said this to your kid? Yeah. Yeah, she said it to my daughter. Oh, then she took the order, and then she comes back with the appetizers and proceeds to tell us in graphic detail how her daughter died in a car wreck that her husband was driving and how the daughter went through the windshield and became decapitated. Oh, jeez. Wow. I should you not. Then... She brings the food and is telling us more about the funeral and the, how many people were there. Needless to say, my poor daughter is terrified, and she looks at me crying and says, Daddy, I don't want to die. And I said, sweetie, you're not going to die. And it just... Almost daddy doesn't drive shitty. Ruined the well, entire week because, I, you know what, conversation is, is one thing, but... When you're trying to serve someone, right. you don't need to tell them about your decapitated kid. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me some fucking breadsticks. I think that at it. least qualifies for free apps. Yeah, I think so. Free right. Apps, I, I hope you. Uh, I hope you brought your check to the manager and asked them to readjust. <laughs> well, and the thing is, the, when she's talking about, it, I'm a retired firefighter, so I have seen it all. But eating the chicken mozzarella soup <laughs> just felt like grain matter. So did, I couldn't eat anything else. In all seriousness, did you tell anybody? Did you tell the manager? Well, I I did not. I'm going to when I get home because of the fact my daughter's there, very upset, 
And it's like, let's just get her out of here, get her some ice cream. Let's try to calm her in, as opposed to her thinking of death. Right. Uh, if, if, uh, I'm, not, I'm not doubting it, but I will say this. If this is a true story, and I understand, you know, being a, if a father wanting to get her out of there or what have you, but I would have had somebody else take your kid out, and I would not have left without talking to the manager first. Because going, ho- going home and then calling back to it, they'll say whatever they can to get you off the phone and maybe give you a free f- meal the next time you come in. But in order if for something that horrific, you should have just demanded to speak to the manager right away. Well, the thing is, it is such a small area that we live in that I have frequented that area a lot, and they do know me, so it's not like I would be calling and just be hung up on. I can actually go and speak to the manager. Good. Go in there and fuck up their Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus Christ. All right, Mark. All right. Some of the firefighter stuff where the houses we've had burn and where I've done arson investigations, let them see those pictures. That would be nice. I think he's saying tit for tat. Uh, yeah, seriously. These are starting to get me depressed. Yeah, this shitty week we, stuff we, is getting bad, man. Can, can we talk about like cartoons or comic books or something fun? We and can exciting? get to that anytime, Matt. People have shitty weeks all the time, and we need to hear about it. All right, all right, Wait. Mark. I'm going to say that qualifies. I'm going to put you on hold there uh, and uh, get your information. Uh, we'll do a couple more here, and then we got to get to uh, uh, we got to take a break, and then get to Zachary Quinto here. The waitress's daughter's name was Olive, and she's in the garden. <laughs> It was called Olive's Garden. I just oh, it's in I the just, center of the restaurant. There's just like one little rose planted in the middle. Yeah, just one rose. I'm gonna go hide someplace. Terrific. Uh, where do we want to go? Do we want to go to Philly, Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, back to Chicago, back to South Carolina? Let's go to Philly. We haven't. Done I'd say Philly either Philly or Ohio. I always have a shitty time when I'm either there. Joe in Philly. What's good? Hi. How are you? Hey, well. So yeah, I, don't, I mean, my week hasn't been that bad. Um, but I've been hearing some of these calls. I work for, like, a national snow removal company, so I'm calling people all throughout the country, making sure, like, their sidewalks, their parking lot, don't have any snow on them. Right. Um, and I've just been hearing a couple people from Wisconsin call in. I just need to say that every single person I talk to in Wisconsin just seems like the most unpleasant, cranky <laughs> individual, and I think one of them has to earn the worst week. Because they live in that state, right? <laughs> so, wow, an advocate for Wisconsin. I like. I like jo- yeah. You know what, Joe? Even though you're not trying to qualify for the toy, you may be on top to win this oh, thing because well. he's he's yeah he's tra- he's boosting for Wisconsin because he's dealing with Wisconsin. Look, they're shitty people. <laughs> Give them a break. Yeah, he's con- he's I like mean, confirming it for us. I feel bad for him. Either that, or the guy <laughs> who lost his nail clippers. You know, uh, that's that's tough. <laughs> All right, Joe. Thank you so much for calling. I appreciate it, man. Take care. Yep. Uh, let's go. Uh, we'll take two more, and then we'll go to break. Talk to Zachary, and then after that, we'll announce who uh, who won this one and go for round two for the other uh, Funko toy there for cool. uh, Better Call Saul. Let's go to Billy in Chicago. Billy. Hey, what's up, guys? Hi, Billy. <laughs> I am honored to speak with you, Eric. <laughs> All right. So it was more just uh today I fucked up type moment uh, while finishing a presentation via screen share for work. Uh, I forgot to unshare my desktop, and like Lenny, I've received iMessages on my computer, my MacBook, and I opened up my message, a message from my wife, and it turned out to be a naked photo. So there it is, just for everyone to see right there while my screen was still being shared. So I, I just kind of panicked and shut it down, but I don't know if they saw it. They saw it. Here's a a question. (laughs) Does your wife know it? Because you're going to have a shittier week later. (laughs) No, she doesn't. I didn't share that with anybody. Do they have security cameras in the conference room? Because now they're screen capping it. (laughs) Very possible. I don't... Look, I don't know if that really qualifies for shitty. I mean, it's more like you're bragging. It's like an unfortunate (laughs) week. (laughs) It was more just a panic moment. This happened. It only takes one. And I panicked and couldn't believe that. It, right. it, it had actually gone down. All right. Well, um, her picture goes through a windshield. That does kind of suck, but I don't think it really qualifies nah. for a really shitty <laughs> week. But Billy, thank you. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Call back soon. All right. Take care. Uh, let's go for the last one here. We'll go to Tyler in Arizona. Tyler. Hey, guys. Hi. Um, so my week started out with, uh, you know, my girl dumping me, so that wasn't cool. Um, I was, you know, trying to clear my head and, 
And uh, my, I, I got a pickup, it's about six months old, you know, fully loaded, Silverado. Um, and I took my dog out on my farm, and uh, he likes to roll in stinky stuff. And um, we just had a picking crew go through, and my dog rolled in a bunch of human shit and then uh, hopped in the back of my truck, and I didn't note it. Then I went back to pet him, got shit all over my truck, all over my hand when I went to pet him, and uh, I got my brand new car full of human shit. Well, that's literally the shittiest story that's, of the week. That, that is, it's, it's literally shitty. All right, uh, we'll qualify you there. I'm going to put you on hold because i got to go to the bathroom. So, uh, <laughs> well, there it is. Um, Thanks for sharing. It's traffic in his blood. Boner in California. If that's, your real, that's not his real that's name. That's his real name. It's uh, Boner. If you want to call back after the interview, Boner? I'll answer that question for you here. We're going to take a break. Um, we got everybody for the first figure, the Mike figure signed by Jonathan Banks. We'll give that away after uh, we speak to our next guest, uh, our first guest tonight, Zachary Quintos, which is coming up next. Uh, we'll be right back. Eric Nagel. You know, you rock. Well, he'll be right back. Any of Opie and Jim's show. I'm really happy to be here. I've had a laugh. Serious XM on demand. Yeah, that was really fun, right? I know I love this show. Ah, this was therapy. Thank you. Go to SiriusXM.com front slash on demand. It's awkward in here, isn't it? Look up Sirius XM Talk and find the show. One listen and you'll be hooked. I used to fuck a shampoo bottle. We should have quit a minute ago. It's kind of petering out. Opie, Jim Norton, on demand. Whenever you want, which should be a lot. I, excuse me. <laughs> Sirius XM presents a special Comedy Central Radio event, the Night of Too Many Stars. Join your host, John Stewart. That's why we're here tonight. That's why we're doing this. Along with some of the biggest comedians in the world. Steve Carell. Amy Schumer. Paul Rudd. Louis C.K. Seriously, this is a real thing. John Oliver. Maya Rudolph. Larry David and many more. Night of Too Many Stars, a benefit show for autism program. Sunday at 8 p.m. East, 5 West on Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. Jim Cramer here. I founded The Street to help investors like you to try to beat the market and make money. Together with seasoned analyst Dave Peltier, we've got a method of trying to find undervalued stocks with big potential. That's right, Jim. With Stocks Under $10, I do all the work for our subscribers, identifying low-priced stocks primed to soar through my own market-proven method. And for a limited time, you can see all the stock picks in my Stocks Under $10 portfolio for free. Go online to GetStocksUnder10.com to learn more. That's GetStocksUnder10.com. Hey, Sirius XM listener. Got 10 minutes to spend on your brain? Take a Lumosity Fit Test to challenge your memory, attention, problem solving, and more. First, you'll play three fun brain games to calculate your baseline scores. We'll even show you how you stack up against people worldwide. Then we'll build a personalized cognitive training program just for you. Ready to start? Get your personalized training program now. Visit Lumosity.com to take your fit test today. That's Lumosity.com. Be honest. Will owning a bigger TV help you get ahead in life? Will another pair of shoes make you a better person? Probably not. But what if you could speak another language? If that appeals to you, Rosetta Stone is letting everyone who calls try an absolutely free demo of its powerful language learning software. Do you want more stuff or a language that will last a lifetime? For your free Rosetta Stone demo, call 1-800-918-9767. 1-800-918-9767. 1-800-918-9767. Mold on your siding, moss on your roof, mildew on your deck. The easiest way to get rid of it all is with Wet and Forget Outdoor. There's no scrubbing, no rinsing, and no pressure washing. Just spray and leave. Wet and Forget Outdoor is non-caustic and safe for any outdoor surface. Siding, roofing concrete stone stucco even fabric just spray and you're done with wet and forget outdoor available at participating ace true value do it best and lowe's home improvement stores visit wetandforget.com for a store near you intergalactic spaceships comic book supervillains fire breathing dragons if you're looking for the perfect gift for that geek in your life or just want to treat yourself to something cool and exciting every month, go to LootCrate.com. LootCrate.com is the ultimate monthly service for geeks, gamers, and pop culture fanatics. Sign up today and for less than $20 a month, Loot Crate will send you a specially themed mystery box filled with hand-picked apparel, collectibles, and licensed gear from 
all your favorite franchises like Marvel, The Walking Dead, Star Wars, The Legend of Zelda, and more. Each month's box features a new theme inspired by the latest movies, TV shows, and video game releases. Go to LootCrate.com slash Opie now to learn more. And for a limited time, use promo code Opie at checkout to save $3 off any new subscription. Go to LootCrate.com slash Opie now. That's LootCrate.com slash Opie. I love coming to Mathnasium. Kids from kindergarten to 12th grade attend Mathnasium, the math-only learning center. Why? I feel much more confident in math. I want to be best in class. My parents sometimes ask me, like, oh, how'd you get an A on this test? And I tell them I go to Mathnasium. Set your child up for success this year at one of more than 500 franchise locations. Visit Mathnasium.com or call 844-844-1911 for a free parent pack. That's 844-844-1911. It's Eric Nagel. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the program, Mr. Do people call you Zach? Do you prefer Zachary? You know, my mom always taught me when I was... Growing up, that if in a professional setting, it should be Zachary. Zachary. Yeah. So Zachary Quinto is Thank here. Thank you. Uh, that is your professional name, yeah. but does your does your mom call you Zach? Yeah, everybody calls me Zach if they know me. You know. Yeah, that's. I think that's the equivalent of people when they say, you know, Bob De Niro, like they're friends with <laughs> Bob them. Redford. Right. Yeah. 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 Bobby D. I wish. It, I wish it was the equivalent to that, but you know, we'll see where we go from here. Uh, you're here to promote uh, the slap on NBC. That's it. A mini series. Mm -hmm. An unusual topic that you wouldn't think would have been made into a miniseries and, and, and getting this much attention? Mm. Well, it's based on an Australian novel that was turned into an Australian miniseries. This is the American adaptation of it. I think what makes it unique here is that it's on NBC, so it's on a broadcast network, right. um, whereas the subject matter might lend itself in people's minds more to cable or um, another outlet platform. Um, you know, the the networks are really trying to keep up with the rapidly changing landscape of TV and how people are watching TV. And I think this is a really great example of of NBC trying to take things in a, in a different and, and unexpected direction. The big scene that set the whole tone was in the first episode yeah. where um, the uh, the child, uh, Hugo, mm -hmm. seemed to have some disciplinary issues mm -hmm. uh, with his parents and what have you. And it was going a little crazy. Swung a bat at another kid. At my character's son. And you went over there and disciplined the child because you felt the parents were not doing so. Correct, yeah. And now this becomes a whole big thing of controversy. And it's unusual in, in I guess, for me growing up, it wasn't really out of sorts where if you acted out or said the wrong thing to an adult as a little kid, or if you, God forbid, you cursed or something like yeah. that, you know, your dad smacked you across the mouth. Well, we must be we around the, the same age. Hold you. I'm 36. Yeah, I'm 37. Oh, so we okay. grew up at the same time. And I think we were of that generation where it was still a part. Corporal punishment was still a right. pretty significant part of disciplining kids and child rearing. Uh, I think that's changed a lot. Dramatically. Since then. Uh, I think we were of the generation where it was considered still inappropriate to discipline other people's children, physically, certainly. Right. Whereas the generation before us, I think, grew up with that being the norm. So it's right. it's um, it's changed and and diluted in a way like corporal punishment used to be just kind of a blanket, uh, a blanket tool. Right. Then it became a little bit derogere for other people to discipline children who weren't their own. Then it became derogere for people to discipline their own children in a corporal way. So. You know, now we live in this somewhat sanitized um, and politically correct culture in which corporal punishment is looked at as generally, um, you know, completely unacceptable right. on any level. And I don't disagree with that, but I do feel like also personally growing up, like I wasn't I wasn't scarred or damaged by by the corporal punishment that was administered to me. No. And I think back then, too, I mean, obviously there's cases where, you know, it's it gets abuse. out of line. Right. But for the most part, it, growing up where if. Like, say I didn't do something right, or say I mouthed off, mm -hmm. and my uncle came over and, you know, smack, grabbed me by the arm and said, you apologize mm -hmm. or whatever, or mm -hmm. I got smacked mm -hmm. in, the, in the face saying, you don't say that to your mom or whatever. Right. It was never how it's portrayed in the show here. Oh, my God, you touched my kid. Right. It would be, 
your uncle is right. You shouldn't right, have done that, right. you know, or especially well, your also, grandmother. Yeah, especially your grandmother. Right? There's also the difference between like getting smacked on like we got we got smacked on the wrist or right. on the knuckles or on the butt. But getting Catholic? slapped in the face. Yeah, 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 OK. Or was. But getting smacked Me in too. the face <laughs> is a little bit of a different game, I think, as well. And, um, you know, I mean, I don't know. I used to get my mouth washed out with soap. Is that That's still a real? thing? That that was even I think was before our time, but if you had parents had to, that were I raised would, that way, yeah, I got yeah. my mouth washed out with soap if I said bad things. My grandmother used to discipline, uh, if if needed, me or my cousins mm -hmm. with uh, the old uh, wooden soup spoon. You wooden know? soup spoon. We had we had an implement called the stick, and the stick was a long, maybe like um, eighteen inch long kind of piece of wood, uh, about as thick as a, a, a wooden soup spoon. Right. And that was our that was our implement. And for you old timers they called it a switch. A switch. Yeah, yeah go fetch yeah. a switch. See? So this comes out and it's if you read not that the internet is really a good gauge for anything, but if you do read online, you see it's kind of fifty fifty on on some of these things. You get a lot of the modern way of thinking with parents where they're like, I, I can't believe someone would even consider doing right. this and then you get a lot of old school where, again, it wasn't considered abuse, but it was just the way you grew up and, and the area of the country you grew up mm -hmm. in, where they're just like, you did nothing wrong. No yeah. one was disciplining the kid. The kid swung a bat at the other kid's head. Something had to be done. Yeah, yeah, you do get it. It is a very, um, um, people I think are, it's a very divisive topic, and it's obviously right. very much a, a part of our society. There's been in the news in the past six months, you know, that football player who... That was a switch, right? That was right. actually a switch. He, mm -hmm. he switched um, his son. And, you know, I mean, it's it's something that I think it goes hand in hand with all these other. There's a lot of parenting themes in, in society right now in right. the news and vaccinating and, you know, that's, breastfeeding that's the, and yeah. all this stuff. You know, that's another thing that the kid on the show is five years old getting breastfed by his mom. You know, it's like sort of unabashedly at a party breastfed by his mom. You're like, right. what? Um, you know, so I think that it seems very black and white in the in the first ish, episode when my character behaves the way he does. I think a lot of people would sort of stand back and say, well, that's ridiculous and right. completely unacceptable. And 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 it's the interesting thing about the show as it progresses. I think I think the the shades of gray um, feed in a little bit more. Not 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 to draw any comparison to the movie. That's but, a great matchup. Yeah, to, right. To, good to, good the good crossover. There. No, but I think that 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 it becomes less clear as to right. in terms of you know yes my character made a bad decision, but the parents of this child uh, are are making some bad decisions in how they're raising him, and I think that everybody ends up being accountable to that in some way or another for a regular broadcast network to uh to green light this thing and say mm -hmm. we're going to air this when you got hired for this thing mm -hmm. did they tell you something like this is going to be kind of controversial that you know you're gonna have to be careful what you say about it no um no i don't i i tend to have a pretty clear um perspective on things and projects that i'm a part of and like i knew that it, the potential was there for it to be controversial but nobody was coaching us as to what to say or how to talk about it other than, you know, what our experience was. Um, There's been no public outcry on this so far, right? I don't, not that I've heard. I mean, it's been public conversation about it, but no, yeah. like... No protest groups or things no, popping up on no. either side. I don't think so. Um, so this has a total one of what, six, eight, eight. episodes? Yeah. Um, you're in the midst of, I guess, what it, it would be legal issues. Oh, yeah, my as, character. As as yeah, well, in the second episode... Um, yeah, he gets arrested um, for what he's done. And, um, you know, I think the second episode, because every episode explores uh, the perspective of one of the main characters. So my my character's episode is the second one. Um, the first one was Peter Sarsgaard's character, Hector. Um, it was a great actor, by the way. Yeah, Peter's amazing. Yeah. It was a great, you know, the whole ensemble of actors is really stellar. To, to It was a huge part of the reason of, I think all of us were drawn to this material because of its complexity. And then also the idea that it was a finite number of episodes was really appealing and um, allowed us to get some really amazing people on board. But um, so, yeah, my, my character in, in his episode, I think he was really confronted with the boundaries of his questionable ethics. And, uh, you know, I, I think he was willing to stand by his actions until enough people around him that he loves and that love him were like, dude, like, you can't be serious. Like you can't, you can't just slap a kid and, and pretend it's okay. Like right. you have to do something to, to make reparations for this. And so he tries, you know, he really tries to apologize and tries to engage in a, 
he tries to he tries to reconcile that he did something wrong, even though on some level he doesn't believe that. Right, uh, and it backfires on him, and uh, and as a result of that, he gets arrested, and uh, and so begins the legal aspect of this um, of this unfolding drama. So it, it on one level it's it's unfolding emotionally and in the relationships between these characters, and then uh, underneath that is the is the actual legal proceedings, which will now lead us through the end of the series. A lighter tone to what I've seen so far during a very crucial intense situation just after the slap where your family starts speaking greek yeah yeah i have a greek side of my family oh, you do? i don't know the language right. i know very little of it and that used to drive me nuts when they would do that when something would be going on everyone's happy but you could tell there was a shift in something somebody's upset somebody's not happy or they're <laughs> they commenting about somebody because the greek comes out yeah. and then the one character goes, no, 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 none of this, n- not in Greek, speak yeah. in English. Yeah, and I, was, yeah. I used to have that as a kid. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> something's going on here. Well, it is a very, you know, the that cultural... that was with Brian Cox, right? Yeah, Brian yeah. Cox and my Another great actor. Oh, yeah, he's amazing, amazing guy. You know, the cultural element of this is also not to be overlooked. I think that, you know, the idea of family above all else, I mean, I'm not, I'm not Greek, I'm Italian, but it's sort of in the same part of the world and they have a similar political and uh and ancestral history and and part of that is really the the idea of family above all and the tribal element of something like this that when when a traumatic or potentially damaging event happens within a tribe um it is it is the expectation that that tribe will close in around the person who is um, most exposed by the incident right um and i think that's a big part of harry's perspective after this is like what are you how are you not going to stand up for me you're my family that's important above all else to him you know like with Hector and uh and and in this episode that just aired you know they're cousins but they're much more like brothers because of how they were raised and I think Harry feels like whoa 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 what are you talking about you're coming to me and telling me that I was wrong how are you taking the side of anybody else you know so the the tribal element is also really important I think the Greek and the language and us speaking Greek throughout um is uh is reflective of that i'm with zachary quinto the miniseries is called the slap it's on thursday nights 8 p.m on nbc if you haven't seen the first few episodes you can go to uh hulu nbc.com has it even on demand on your cable or satellite provider to catch up and and see where everything is going here um I want to just take a side uh, side step from the slap for a second. Now you're known worldwide for many different projects. Heroes, your first, I would say, your first big project that everyone started associating you Mm -hmm. with, and then obviously Star Trek. I've really noticed a lot of females figuring out who you are because of your time on American Horror Story. Okay, and you went from all the you know the guys and the sci-fi crowd and everything uh-huh. like that but i'm seeing more and more every time somebody talks about american horror story uh-huh. your character is one of the characters that always comes up and even though you've you've been off the show for yeah, for a couple of years yeah, yeah um still very memorable and mm. it's just did you expect that to be as big as it was because i don't think anybody really did uh, it's hard for me uh to have a perspective on on things once they are out in the world if that makes sense um you know, I, I have a strong relationship to my work when I'm doing it, right. but then I'm my work is done by the time people are watching it, and I'm by and large on to other projects and focused on other things. So I have a, I have a you know, my relationship to how people react to things is a little bit disconnected or distant. I don't really, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I get recognized on the street for any one thing more than another. It's sort of a balance of, of projects. Yeah, and that's, that's what I was trying mm-hmm, to bring up because mm-hmm. you're, you're known for so many big projects. So mm-hmm. it's not like people know you for Spock or for, or for sure. Siler. But now with a new demographic of, of a lot of females watching American yeah. Horror Story, now recognizing you if they didn't and knowing you from that I show. I feel like a lot of, a lot of females uh, watched Heroes and responded to Heroes and to the character that I played on Heroes. I think like, there's a there's something that happens with um, with an audience in general, but maybe particularly um, with women who are drawn to shows that have a darker undercurrent like right. that, where you know the, part of them are, are looking for maybe this darker fantasy projection kind of thing with these characters and respond to them in that way and for that reason. Maybe um, it's so because I've, you play darker, creepier characters, but you're also very attractive along well, with it. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Maybe that's the balance that we're looking for right there. Um, you know, yeah, but I think that I think that it doesn't surprise me. I get what you're saying a little bit, and I and I felt it in Heroes um, because that was my first experience with any kind right. of large scale exposure and people actually recognizing me or knowing who I was. And 
I was surprised with Heroes how women responded to the character of Siler and found him attractive and alluring and magnetic and right. and sexy in ways that I would never have expected going into it, you know. But I think it comes down to like people drawn to that darker side of uh of 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 characters that represent qualities that they might not be able to embody in their own lives. Right. So they're able to engage them and uh, indulge them in a fantasy world and in an entertainment context. And that's what that's what good entertainment does, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm certainly happy about that. Yeah, you're in a great position because it's not just like you'd have to worry about being typecast and say like all you did was Spock and mm -hmm, Star Trek mm -hmm. and then you tried some other stuff. People mm -hmm. would go, oh, he's Spock and Star sure. Trek. But you have such a spread of major projects that each character was you know, larger than life and everybody knew. Mm. So you have a nice balance of, oh, he was this guy, this guy, mm -hmm. this guy, this guy. And you're never going to be pretty much pigeonholed as, oh, we don't really want to hire Spock for this right. movie. Well, it doesn't the, fit into this That's thing. the goal is to really defy expectations that people have of me and that even that I have of myself. And, you know, I think the slap does that in, in yet another way, which is like it's still an antagonist. It's still a kind of um, theoretically a villain of the series, but it's a series that's rooted in the real world and in everyday life and not rooted on a spaceship and not rooted in a, a universe where people have superpowers. And, you know, I'm, I'm interested in the thing that you never really are able to account for before you become known, right? Like all those years that I was struggling and auditioning and trying to get my career to a place where I could say like, oh yes, I accomplished this thing that I set out to accomplish, which was like, exposure right success equals exposure in some ways as an actor and um so when i got to that point with heroes i never was able to see beyond it right like that's the only place that i was working to get to and then i arrived there and i was thrilled and, and it felt like okay oh, now the world is my oyster but then the thing you begin to realize is then people do associate you sometimes inextricably with the character that you become first known for or most known for. And then on the heels of Heroes came Star Trek, and that was also genre-oriented. Right. So I've been really doing this 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 little leapfrog in my own mind and in my own strategizing in terms of what I what I accept uh, as far as work goes to really change it up, you know? And so, like, Heroes and American Horror Story were, were one, one genre, and now the slap is a different genre. Right. And I'm sort of moving into It's dramatic ways. but not evil. Yeah, or actually, in some ways, I think it's kind of the most evil character that I've played. But but but, it's, but because it's of his humanity, on, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, but yes, you know what I mean. So it's about really cultivating. And I, I was I made my Broadway debut last year, and I've come back to the theater in a really meaningful way. Um, in the last few years, um, I did an off Broadway production of Angels in America in 2010, and The Glass Menagerie last year. Um, you know, so also doing theater and. Being able to yeah, you're always busy. There's yeah, never anytime you read anything about you, you're always project to project, you're, which is a blessing because you're never true, you don't have yeah, any downtime. No, yeah. in the sense that uh, I don't know if I'm going to get cast in this part. Yeah. Everything's overlapping, so that's great. Yeah, I feel really, really grateful that I've been able to both um, be afforded that opportunity and then also to generate it in certain ways. That's you know why I started my production company as well. One other project that uh, if you really want to see uh, your diversity is I had Simon Helberg in not too long oh, ago yeah. for uh, We'll Never Have Paris. Sure, yeah. So you. You also doing the best friend role in a rom-com <laughs> yeah. which takes you out too because you're like okay i know him from all this stuff let's yeah. see where he goes with this yeah, and you're yeah. like oh he got that too yeah well never he, he it. it was really fun i had a great time working on that and uh I have a couple of episodes of Girls coming up, which is also a bit of a departure for me. You know, I don't get a chance to do much comedy because the characters that I've played have been so kind of, um, you know, I don't know, self-serious in a way or whatever. But I, but I love comedy, and, and it's something that I really want to cultivate the opportunity to do more of. Have you shot Girls yet? Yeah. You have? Yeah. All right, without giving anything away, sure. are you doing weird stuff in this like every boyfriend seems yeah. to do in this show? Yeah, I am. <laughs> Okay, so it's something to look forward to. Okay. I mean, yeah, I guess so. I definitely, uh, I definitely, um, there are definitely scenes in which I am not wearing any clothes. Another reason to As see something with Zachary Quinto, right? right? On girls. Um, you also have Star Trek uh, Three, which is still a couple years away. Yeah. Um, J.J. Abrams not on board with that one. Uh, on board peripherally, not not, not directing. directing yeah. No. With him doing the Star Wars franchise. Mm -hmm. Any talk about ever doing something over there, too? Has it ever been brought up to you? Have no, you been personally curious? it hasn't been brought up to me. I haven't been curious or interested. I feel like, you know, my immersion in the JJ universe is, is squarely through the 
ex- perspective of uh, of Star Trek, and I don't, you right. know, I'm I feel like I can't wait to see that movie. The the teaser looks amazing. Is the rumor is Simon Pegg's over the, uh, doing something over oh, there as sure, well? Yeah, so he's doing both. I wonder. Well, Simon just has the bad robot sort of franchise market cornered. I mean, he's got on Mission his Impossible. <laughs> he's got Star Trek. He, I would be surprised if he didn't have right. And and he's amazing. And Simon's come on board to uh, to work on the script of our movie of of the third Trek movie, which is great. You know, I mean, I couldn't love Simon anymore. He's such an incredible guy. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I feel like there's a lot of moving parts in that, in that world and they're all kind of coming together now. I haven't read a script. Right. I know that they have a release date in July of 2016 to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the original series. And, um, and we're working backwards from there. So I guess when the phone rings, I'll answer it. Another project you have in the works is uh, Hitman Agent 47. Are you yeah. a big video game fan? No. No. Not particularly. So I never how is evolved, it coming into this? I never evolved past the NES system. Uh, you know, like, that was my... The basics. Yeah, the very Mario basics. And then, I, and then I sort of never went on to Nintendo 64 I so, um, and beyond. Uh, yeah, you know... Did I you mean, have to get familiar with the game, with no, the comics, all I didn't, that? No, I did I mean, I, I felt like... For me, it was like the, the the questions that I needed to have answered were hopefully answered in the script, and if they weren't, then I I sort of answered them for myself. Um, I didn't, I wasn't, I don't think anybody was interested in trying to recreate the video game. It's like, you know, people who are fans of that world will hopefully be interested in the movie, but also people who aren't fans of that world will hopefully be interested in the movie because the movie will be good is the intention. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I feel like, I think I know Rupert played the game, Rupert Friend, who plays Agent 47. Uh, I know he familiarized himself with the game, and, and he's the titular character, so that makes more sense. The character that I play is a very peripheral character in the game. It's not, you know, um, I, I felt like it was a different embarkation. It was a different mode of storytelling, and I didn't need to play the game in order to identify with the character. You know, remakes are pretty popular and uh, seems to be trend going on for a while now. If they ever decide to redo Matrix, you could fit an Agent Smith pretty well. well. That would be fun, yeah. yeah. I don't, Silver I mean, glasses in the suit. It feels a little bit like that's all, oh, you, know, you can't put anything past uh, our culture these days, but it feels like that was its own thing, right? right? Like, The Matrix was one of those movies that I think just reinvented the idea of storytelling and movie going and it was such an event in unto itself that i feel like it would be i wouldn't want to take on that role in a way you know the show the mini i keep calling it the show the mini series the slap is on nbc thursday nights 8 p.m check it on demand on hulu if you want to catch up zachary quinto before you go i'm Mm -hmm. I'm running out of time here with you you know this guy from all his work from tv from movies uh, theater as well you have your own action figures which is (laughs) is awesome for both heroes and for uh Star Trek for, yeah. uh, for Star Trek. Have you ever gone to a Comic Con? I have. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If you go nowadays, yeah. like if you go this year, you could see yourself in three different costumes. Sure. By people on the floor. Yeah. Uh, that would blow my mind. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's uh, that world is is a very, um, exotic and uh, rarefied place, you know. And uh, and I and I love going to, uh, events. It's 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 changed my relationship to them. I remember the first year that we went to Comic Con with Heroes. And it was the year that they announced that I was going to be in Star Trek and the thrill of being there and the enthusiasm of the crowd. And, you know, I remember going on to the floor of the convention center and walking around right. and wearing a hat and thinking, like, oh, this is cool, you know, and obviously now it's much more of a it's much more of a platform to discuss projects and you sort of go in the back door and go onto the panel and leave and you don't get to engage as much because it's not really right. possible. But I think they're a really great uh, environment for people who are passionate about about programming and movies and shows that they love and comic books, of course. And uh, so I'm all for it. You can just throw a mask on and walk the floor and go shopping. I could do that. Maybe next time. Uh, Zachary Quinto on Twitter. You haven't used your Twitter in a while. You know, it's funny you say that. I have uh, I've actually deleted the apps from my phone of Twitter and Instagram. Oh, you're done. I don't know that I'm done, but I'm definitely taking a very a specific break from them. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I also noticed your dot com links to the uh, All Is Lost movie site. Yeah. So yeah, that's my production company's film. But um, you know, I uh, I just decided to kind of see what the world would be like if I wasn't picking up my phone every time I you know had a moment. You're a brave man in this brand new world. Oh well, we'll see. Zachary Quinto, thank you Thanks, so much. Man. The Slap Mini Series on NBC Thursdays 8 p.m. Thanks, Thanks so for much, having man. me. Appreciate it. Ooh, we're shaking hands. <laughs> Is that unusual? No, that's great. <laughs> It's 
Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. Eric Nagel. to It's Eric Nagel, 866-969-1969 is the phone number to get in touch with us. Thank you to Zachary Quinto. Um, it's awesome. Check out the, the slap. And he's also going to be in the new Hitman video game. Right. So uh, that's coming, I think, later this year. I forgot the date on that. I think it's by the, around the fall or something like that. So make sure you go out and check that out as well. Um, this song by Nerf Herder, who also started the show with uh, Welcome to My World. This was their song. Keep keep going a little bit, Paul. Uh, Mr. Spock, Zachary Quinto, going into the death of Leonard Nimoy. See how it all ties together? Not really. I just wanted to play the song. I see uh, how it ties together, Eric. Right. Uh, the William Shatner news, we're pretty much a week detached from it now. But uh, I thought it was kind of bullshit that people were giving him a hard time because he didn't make it to the funeral. He had a commitment. He honored the commitment. To a charity event. Yeah, right. And people are like, fuck them. Fuck helping people. Go Listen, see your friend. Logic clearly dictates that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Oh, said that, Spock to Captain Kirk. I'm going to trade. So there oh, you go. God damn it. I was going to trademark that. <laughs> it's going to be a t-shirt. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, it was just bullshit. The guy, he committed to, uh, like you said, a, a charity event. And what looks worse, that not going to the funeral or not going to a Red Cross event? That's helping people. I think if he would have blown off the Red Cross event, it would have been worse publicly than not going to Nimoy's and, funeral. And you know what? Even if he didn't have the Red Cross event, even if he chose not to go to the funeral, what is that anybody's fucking business? That's his choice. It's his choice. You know, some people don't like going to funerals and wakes. They would rather mourn or grieve in their own way. You know, that that's his decision, and it's not disrespect to the family in any way. No, I don't it think so. It is what it is. I mean, it's the same thing that happened um, when Chris Farley died, and David Spain uh, skipped the funeral, and everyone made a big deal about it. He's like, I can't see my friend in a coffin. Sorry. Like, yeah, you know, like, some people have different reasons. It's just, exactly. That's how it works. It's just, you know, he, it's just no one's opinion. Like, people really need to find better ways to spend their energy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll uh, do a uh, dated reference in the Britney Spears uh, guy voice. Leave William Shatner alone. <laughs> oh, horrible. <laughs> Poor Billy. Uh, there was a tweet. I, there was a couple tweets I wanted to get to real quick. Okay. One, uh, how do you do? Ever since they updated the app, I can't find the favorites. There we go. Uh, one is somebody sent a con uh, consumer suggestion. This looks completely disgusting, but I know a lot of people love Peeps. Apparently, they put out Peep Milks. I don't know. I think I might try that. <laughs> can there's, you milk a Peep? I you, guess you so. Can, there are Peep Teats. Because there's cho chocolate marshmallow <laughs> reduced fat. Wow, well, why always reduce fat? If you're going to drink Peep <laughs> if you're milk, drinking marshmallow just marshmallow go milk. for the gusto here. <laughs> Who are you kidding? Uh, marsh there's regular marshmallow flavor, there's chocolate marshmallow, and there's Easter eggnog. I want to try the Easter eggnog. I want to know what that tastes like. I, I might uh, get some. I'm going to bring some into the show if I can find it. Uh, I think you should do that next week. All right. If I can find it next week, I'm bringing it in. Who makes these? Prairie Farms Prairie makes Farms, these. Yeah. Uh, thanks to uh, O Grits and Gravy on Twitter <laughs> for that. And uh, the other thing I saw, which was really funny, um, 
from uh, at Ty Trot on Twitter said, "My week was terrible. I watched two episodes of Gotham." I feel I feel Ouch. sorry for that guy. I was I, all on board with the show, and much like the leftovers, as time went on, I was like, "I can't deal with." It. And it, I tried to plow through it, despite the fact that Matt was uh, gone from the jump. But I had to stay with this thing, and now it's just ridiculous. Well, I've Are you still hate it. watching it? I, I'm hate watching okay. it. So I, I, ha- I kind of have to hate watch it. Because I'm just confused between here and then, and then geek stuff. We talk about it a lot, right? So I, I kind of want to know why I'm thrashing it. But it's terrible. It's so bad. But uh, today we learned, confirmed. I don't think we really. This was a surprise, but Fish Mooney, a.k.a. Jada Pinkett Smith, not surviving the end of season one, which is huge because she could be the worst person on the show. Right. So, uh, huzzah to that. I don't know that it's going to save the show, but certainly it's a step in the right well, direction. Well, I don't know if that'll save the show, but remember when they said you were not going to see anybody in the first season, and now all of a sudden it seems to be uh, speed rolling in that you're going to see a certain person? I still don't think you're going to see This season him. here, uh, I want to go to John in Texas. John. Hey, uh, hey I, I don't know if I'm going to get the actor's name right, but I think it was Jared Leto. Um, he shaved his head, and they had him all made up as the Joker, and the uh, picture came out, I guess, a couple days ago. So the, the 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 shaved head picture is correct, and the clean shaven picture is correct. The had him made up as the Joker was kind of just photoshoppy stuff. But he's playing Joker in the Suicide uh, Suicide Squad movie that's coming out in twenty eighteen or sixteen. Twenty two late to care, right? Um, no, it's <laughs> but it's a different version. It's not the same character that will appear on Gotham. It's a different universe, um, and it's the reintroduction of the Joker into this new Superman Batman universe. I think Jared Leto is a perfect casting choice i just don't know that i care about the suicide squad right yeah well i was thinking you know since they're changing the character the way it looks all together isn't gonna fuck it up a little bit or they're not really changing the way it looks though I, you know, I think it depends on what you're, what you think the Joker looks like. The Joker's looked so many different ways through the years. True. Um, all the different comic books, toys, movies, he's looked so different. Uh, I think the direction they're going is the new Fifty Two Joker. If you're familiar with the books, he looks a lot like the designs by Greg Capullo. So I think that's what oh, they're yeah, going. Yeah. I got you. All right, thanks, guys. All right, Here thanks, John. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I, I'm done. I think I'm I'm watching Gotham, but I'm just confused and puzzled. Like I, it's just like, w- what's the point of this anymore? The guy who plays Penguin continues to be really good. If they gave him his own show, I think I'd be on board. But I would agree I don't with know that. that I could carry the re- the rest of it is just so difficult to watch. Um, he was on Walking Dead too for a couple episodes. Oh, was he Robin yeah, something? Or yeah, around? he yeah. got his throat slit in the beginning nice. of season five. Spoiler alert! That's an honor. Yeah, there you yeah, go. he did. He was pretty awesome. He they had him on Talking Dead too, and he was really good. I was like, wow, this guy's pretty solid. Yeah, he's he awesome what he's talking as, about. He's awesome as Cobblepot. So yeah. I know I'm not going to get the, uh, the exact phrasing right, but uh, at some point, I think it was this week on Ron and Fez. Ron was talking about Gotham. And he said, it doesn't matter what's going on because it's going to be at least 20 years before Batman shows up. So all these awful stories and characters are going to be around until Batman comes around. Right. So I was like, damn good point. Yeah, I mean, Bruce Wayne is on the show. He's probably about 10 years from becoming Batman, I guess, depending on what version of the story you know of Batman becoming Batman, but he's all right. The kid that plays Bruce Wayne is all right. So how old is, uh, if that, if Jared Leto is going to be the Joker, like how old is he supposed to be in this Gotham universe then? If Batman's already like only like 10, is he going to be like a teenager? No, 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 no. Different, like... different universe. Oh, different? different? Goth- okay. Jared Leto is playing Gotham, uh, playing Joker in the Suicide Squad, which is the film universe. Oh, okay, Gotham gotcha. is not part of the film universe. Gotcha, okay, my He bad. is playing the Joker to Ben Affleck's Batman. Okay. There you go. I had it mixed up. Yeah. Ben Affleck's Batman. Batfleck. Batfleck. Right. Uh, we're going to go back to Boner in, in California. I told him to call back after the interview here. You did. You did. What up, Boner? What up? Were you named after Boner Stabone of Growing Pains? <laughs> no, it's a stupid nickname. Okay. <laughs> How'd you I get it? Stuck with me. Uh, I got an NRB in class, and one of my buddies was there. And he taught me. <laughs> okay. I, I told you it was a stupid story. <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he did warn you. He warned us. Yeah. Defense. Very fair, sir. Very fair. <laughs> I wanted to ask. Uh, I want to ask you, Rock. What your favorite breweries out here in the West Coast were, and uh, if you've actually ever been out here to physically try some of these. Uh, craft beers out here i haven't been out to the west coast in many years and uh definitely uh haven't had the chance to go to uh, any breweries 
uh, on the West Coast, although I would love to go. I know there's a bunch uh, in the San Francisco area, in, in uh, Portland, in, uh, I think the Seattle area has some good breweries as well. Oh, West Coast. Um, I'm not familiar with a whole bunch of the West Coast stuff, because a lot of times you can't get it out here on the East Coast. But I do like uh, 21st Amendment Brewery out of San Francisco. All right on. They make that beer, uh, Hell or High Watermelon. Yeah, that one's really oh, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very tasty. Good I, summer beer. I rely on the masses of none to tell me what beer to drink. If they don't tell me, then I don't know. <sighs> From like the California beers we got here, I'm a big fan of uh, like Rogue. Uh, Rogue Brewery's got good ones. Uh, Stone Brewery's Wait, got Rogue? good ones. Where, Rogue, where's Bro- Rogue? Um, I'm pretty sure... Is that California? It might be Oregon. I might be wrong. I, but I know it's I, West Coast. I love their trying their really messed up flavors. They had a raspberry chocolate one not yeah, too long ago. Yeah, had that one. And they're always in the weird pink bottles. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Rogue's pretty good. And Lagunitas is yeah, really you need, good, too. You need to come out to uh, Southern California so you can have, you know, try some of the breweries we've got out here. we got, like, really good stuff coming out of Southern California. Believe me, I would love to. You know how people always want to go to California and go through uh, the Napa Valley and wine country? I would love nothing more than just to go up the whole West Coast, uh, even into Canada, and just go to breweries. Do a brewery tour. Oh, yeah, man. I'd do it. I'd do that. That'd let's, be awesome. Let's do that. No, we're going to pay for us to go do it, but maybe That's one right. day that'll be in the cards for us. Uh, <laughs> thank you for calling, Bonner. I appreciate it, man. Love you. Uh, Aww. Aww. That was so nice for a boner. Uh, wow, a Stargate question. I never get these. Hi, oh. Travis. How are you? Travis Stargate. in Missouri. Hey, Rock. It's a pleasure, sir. What can I do for you? Uh, I know you as a big Stargate fan. Right. Uh, SG1. I watched it all 10 years, and then I watched Stargate Atlantis. Right. And then it ended abruptly, and I wondered. I always heard rumors of a Stargate Atlantis movie, and... Never seen nothing of it. I know I've, I watched the the SG One movies, but never seen nothing on Stargate Atlanta. <clears throat> right. I, I heard something about that too, but it, for some reason it was just I don't know if they could get approved or it was just taking too long because some of the actors were had other projects. In fact, uh, the guy who played uh, was it Rex or Rocks? Dan. Uh, he's J- Jason Momoa. Right. Was on that show, and now he's in every uh, action Aquaman. movie that they couldn't get the Rock for. <laughs> right. So he's he's there and doing a lot of this stuff. They were supposed to do something, but then all of a sudden the Stargate Universe came out. Uh, for two seasons, which I thought was interesting, but I liked they, it. they didn't give it enough time to to really let it develop, so right. that went away. But there's supposedly in the works for a, uh, a new Stargate movie, but it's a sequel to the original Stargate movie with James Spader and Kurt Russell. That's correct. The story um, was written. I forgot the guy's name. Roland Emmerich. Thank you. Uh, I, that could be false. I'm just saying thank you to move this along. <laughs> I, I think that's correct. <laughs> um, they they wrote the stories, and uh, apparently Stargate was supposed to be a trilogy of movies, but then uh, MGM wanted to move it into a TV show, which they debuted on, I believe it started on Showtime before going to sci-fi. I thought it was on sci-fi the whole time. No, it, it was on Showtime, okay. I think, the first season. <laughs> because the first episode of the pilot had nudity and cursing and stuff like oh, okay. that. Um, otherwise, oh. sci-fi got really cool. And uh, they wound up doing the TV show, which obviously was very successful, and the guys who originally had the rights to Stargate uh, were kind of pissed that they went in that direction and just did nothing. But now that everything is kind of, uh, you know, gone to pasture here, they said, oh, we're going to do the sequel, which is 20 years too late. And yeah. pretty much everybody views the storylines from SG-1 Atlantis as the continuation of the story. Bypassing all of that and going a different direction, it's kind of like... I I don't think it would be accepted, especially like when they did Star Trek. It started off at the origin point and then went right. into an alternate universe, and people accepted it. It was cool because it didn't fuck with the old stuff. But I don't think they would people would like that with Stargate. I don't think there's enough people that would care about a Stargate movie that didn't have Richard Dean Anderson in it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe they almost might be better off just rebooting it from the go instead of trying to do a follow up to the original. I've only seen the original movie. I haven't seen any of the shows or any of the, the like show straight to DVD really like sequel stuff is. or whatever it was. It oh, is. Good. How hot is Amanda tapping? Uh, back then wasn't bad. Now I, I don't know, um, but I'm sure if you Google her, she does all those conventions, and all the Stargate conventions are up in Canada. She was. A, what was that other show that she was on for a while? Uh, and on Sci-Fi, she was on another show, not um, Stargate. No, not Stargate. Uh, Fargate? Sorry, the Fargate. Yeah, I know about, but I can't remember the name of it. Uh, it doesn't, whatever. Anyway, whatever, whatever it was. All right, we got to move. Of Atlantis. 
The what? Yeah, she crossed over to Atlantis for a little bit. But we got to move on, Travis. Thank Sanctuary. you very much for calling. That's what it was. Sanctuary? Sanctuary? Yeah. There's your answer. Thank you for calling, man. I appreciate it. Um, we're running uh, out of time here because we got to get to Jason Isaacs uh, in a couple of uh, minutes here. Uh, a couple other things we want to touch on real quick. The new Avengers trailer yes. came out. And it's uh, more action-packed and not as uh, creepy as the first one where James Spader is reciting uh, the song from Pinocchio. Right. But uh, this one looks pretty cool, and it reveals... Um, it It's still sort of reveals the vision. We still don't have a full reveal, right. but we get our first actual tease of him. Um, I think that for me, I'm going dark after this. Because I'm sure we're going to get another trailer at some There's point. There's going to be a lot of trailers. I mean, when does this come out? It comes out now. It's only a month and a half away. It's oh, like okay. the beginning of May. But I still think we might get one more trailer, at least another TV spot. I'm going dark. I don't want to see any more trailers. I don't want to see any more photos, photos, anything. I right. want to... Because this trailer, to me, was perfect in that it still did not reveal the vision. It was a different tone than the first one. It, you know, piqued my interest. I'm definitely interested. But I don't want anything else spoiled at this point. I've yeah. seen enough... To, to just want to go in now. Okay. So. Well, it's uh, it's online everywhere. I saw it on yeah, IGN, yeah. but uh, you can do a hashtag search on Twitter. Just Google it. it it's in you a million places. It. You can't uh, miss it. It, it. it does look very promising. Uh, this is going to be awesome. Buster looks awesome. It does. Can't yeah, wait. that Hulk fight in the trailer oh. looks crazy. <laughs> Cannot wait sell for a lot that. of toys with that one. A lot of expensive toys with uh, that one. Another... uh Hope there's shape-shifting toys. Another uh, a piece of news that came out this week... If uh, you're not familiar with this show, you definitely should seek it out. Tales from the Dark. Or side. 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 Wow, yeah. I just had a brain fart. Wow. You had a complete yeah, that was, breakdown. Oof. That was just that you had a stroke. I was looking at the clock and I spaced out. But Tales from the Dark Side is uh, coming back. Um, very exciting news. What is a little disappointing is the network that it's coming back on. Well... I'm okay with the CW. As you know, I'm a huge Flash and Arrow fan, right. and that's the CW, so I'm, I'm okay with the CW. I'm more concerned with the direction that they're going. But how like how messed up can they get being on the CW? Well, Tales from the Dark Side really wasn't as messed up as like Tales from the Crypt was. Like Tales from right. the Dark Side was just a lot more creepier stories. Right. Like Tales it from the Crypt was cutting off fingers. Yeah, and, like it was a yes. lot more horror based. Whereas like Tales from the Dark Side just kind of like Twilight Zone light, like with horror. Right. It was just more of that kind of. Vibe. Are you saying it was a step up from Are You Afraid of the Dark? Uh, no, or I, Eerie, I loved Are You Afraid of the Dark. I actually just rewatched <laughs> all of them on YouTube the other day. Nice. They're all on there, and they're on Canadian Netflix. So nice. Just letting people know that. Um, <laughs> so, how did you find Canadian Netflix, Skittles? I imagine well, not, I've been to not Canada. Canada. <laughs> um, so the original uh, TV show, Skittles, you can confirm this for me. Yeah. The original TV show, each in, each episode was like an individual story. It yep. was self-contained, right, week after week or whatever. It, so this new reboot, they have one character that's going to be, um, he's going to be like a reoccurring character that kind of ties it all together. Yeah, he's going to become a, like, almost like the Crypt Keeper from the Tales from the Crypt type thing, it Except sounds that like. the Crypt Keeper wasn't really in the episodes, right? He was, he was more in like every the, episode. Was he? I thought he was just the narrator. Well, no, he like, I mean, well, I mean, he was in every episode, but he was like the host. Like, he was the one who would give the horrible ghost puns. Correct. And then like, introduce the story. He was in like, one episode Right, but he wasn't it. actually part of the story. Story, except no, for like except for the one episode twice, right. where it was like his birth, but other than that, yeah, he wasn't. This guy, oh, that's right, I remember his birth. This guy sounds like this character is going to be in each episode. He's the sole regular character, a man who becomes aware of a terrifying force called the dark side. <laughs> I think we've heard of that force I, I, I'm pretty positive that force has been heard of before. One episode, get sued, project done. <laughs> done. <laughs> Tales uh, from what, the Dark Side, we tried to When is this it. supposed to come out? Um, I think it's next year. Okay, so we still got a while to wait. Yeah, CW is, is, is loaded up for this year, so. Yeah. All right, well, we got to take a break and welcome uh, Jason Isaacs to the show. Uh, but before we go, let's pick the winner real quick for the uh, shitty story. And we'll give away uh, we'll give away both, photo, uh, both figures at this time. Nice. We, we have a signed Saul Goodman by uh, Bob Odenkirk. And Sign Michael uh, Erman Trout. Thank you. I can never remember the name, but signed by Jonathan Banks. Um, looking through the list here, I think it's safe to say the guy whose figures were eaten by his cat. Are we in agreement that that guy should win something? I think it's only fair. He I loses think it's a fair. figure to a cat, he gets a new figure. All right, so Gordon's going to get, uh, we'll give him the Mike figure. But if they get eaten, don't get any more. Like, don't be calling back here. That's right. right. This is your cat eats this. Then it's it's all it's on, all on you. Game over, man. You have some bad karma. Yeah. And I think for the Saul Goodman one, uh, there was a couple that we looked at. The guy in San Francisco who had his luggage stolen. Uh, but 
Uh, well, there's also the uh, the guy who went the to Olive Garden, Garden. and the waitress told his uh, eight-year-old daughter about how her seven-year-old son just died. Yeah, uh, terrible. As Giddles was saying, I don't think that was a bad week, just a horrific event. Right. So I don't think that qualifies, even though that was an interesting story. I think we should give it to the guy who got fired, tried to get his trucking license, failed the test, and wound up getting uh, two tickets for $600. <laughs> uh. Yeah. That's a bummer. That's a shitty week. That's a, a shitty week. <laughs> so congratulations to uh, to Jesse. You get the Saul Goodman um, signed figure. We're going to go to break, and we'll be right back with Jason Isaacs. Eric Nagel. You know, you rock. Well, he'll be right back. Matt, it's that time. We welcome back Loot Crate. Yes! They were gone last week, but now they're back. We like the Loot Crate. And I wish they were here last week, because we got the new Loot Crate. We did! Which was all the uh, the tabletop games and card games, yep. dice games, all that cool stuff was in there. And uh, we opened it up. And they weren't here, so we didn't do it on the air. But we'll tell you what we got. There was a cool Dunny figure, uh, blank Dunny figure in yeah. there that you took home. I know you were really right, excited right. about that. I think uh, Ready Player One was one of the things I was really excited about. The, the book, book. Right. And now uh, Loot Crate actually is running a contest, I think, on their Instagram feed, right? Where right. You can win, go like, to a signed copy. Go to Loot Crate uh, on Instagram, and yeah, they, you, they give you the directions of what they want you to do with the with the book or, or something like that. Yep. But you can get an autographed copy of the book, which is definitely really cool. So you want to check that out. But also, maybe you want to get a Loot Crate for yourself if you're looking for that perfect gift for that geek in your life. Or yourself. <laughs> Treat yourself. You deserve it. Uh, especially if you had a shitty week. Uh, that's right. If you had a shitty week, Loot Crate is the way to go. Uh, treat yourself to something fun and exciting every month and go to LootCrate.com. LootCrate.com is the ultimate monthly service for geeks, gamers, and pop culture fanatics. Forget about the other millions of box subscriptions that are out there. There's a few that popped up recently that we won't... I'd like to talk about, but we can't. Uh, we won't talk about them. But uh, go to LootCrate.com. Sign up today. And for less than $20 a month... Loot Crate will send you a specially themed mystery box filled with hand-picked apparel, collectibles, and licensed gear from all your favorite franchises like Marvel, The Walking Dead, Star Wars, Game of Thrones, and much, much more. Each month, every box features a new theme inspired by movies, TV shows, and video games. This month, the theme is Covert, and it celebrates secret agents, conspiracies, and double crosses of your favorite spy and thriller franchises. Now, Matt... You get to uncover exclusive items from Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Nice. You're a fan of that. I am. I'm a fan of that as well. Also, Agent Carter. Yes. Very yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, maybe they'll throw that in for the next month. But this also will feature Orphan Black. I am so excited for Orphan Black. That's so I excited. That and Orphan, Orphan Black's coming back in April, right? Season three is coming back very soon. Yep. For uh, BBC America, you should check that out. But we're talking about Loot Crate, and uh, Orphan Black is featured in this month's box. So go to LootCrate.com slash OP right now and sign up for a limited time. Use the promo code OP at checkout, and you save three bucks on a brand new subscription. Go to LootCrate.com slash OP now. Promo code OP. Get all this cool stuff. And, uh, of course, we're always going to talk about Loot Crate because they just give you awesome things. Get it? LootCrate.com slash OP. It's Eric Nagel. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome my next guest. He's been in a million different things, but I think, for, at least for the American audience, you may know him best from the Harry Potter movies. Maybe. I mean, there's some people... That Is that fair? Not really. Uh, Not enough, really? When I'm walking down the street here, it's odd. You can tell when people walk up to me. I, I instantly know what they've seen me in. So, obviously, there's a certain generation that know me from Harry Potter. There's a certain numbers of people who watched Awake, who loved Awake, when it was on NBC. I'm one there's of them, yeah. A lot of people watch Brotherhood, and that's generally gang members who cross the road. I think, I'm either dead or I'm going to be high-fived. And they watch Brotherhood, and they like my gangs from that. And then there's soldiers. A lot of soldiers saw Black Hawk Down in Green Zone and wanted to talk to me about that because they thought they were... Interesting, or you know, accurate representations of the forces. So you never quite know. But I, I, I can, I play a little sweet state game in my mind when people cross over and, and try and guess what they know me for. Well, please welcome to the show, Jason Isaacs. How are you? Thanks so much. I'm pretty good. Yeah. I'm he just there. gave you uh, his whole resume there. I did some of it. Yeah. And I, he's here promoting his new thing, Dig. It is. It's a. It's a. I'm not allowed to say mini series anymore. It's an event series, which is based an event. A mini series. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> um, that's set in Jerusalem. And it's a kind of murder mystery conspiracy thriller. But the most interesting thing about it, I mean, like. We will go on about why it's great and what's interesting in it is that it comes from these two geniuses, uh, Tim Kring, who came up with Heroes, and Gideon Raff, who came up with Homeland. And the two of them are just such awesome storytellers. 
that they, they tell you a story about you know looking for a nose hair. You'd be leaning in and gripped. And when they have a story like this, which is about people trying to bring about the end of the world in in the most contested piece of real estate the, the Earth's ever known, they really are, are in their strike zone. This uh, this uh, event, as as we're calling it, has a lot of different feels to it. Where yeah. it's uh, at some parts, it's uh, it's a little bit Indiana Jones. In some parts, it's a little bit of uh, uh, national treasure. It's a little bit da of Vinci uh, Code. They say da Vinci oh. Code, like but that. Also, like Homeland, there's a lot, and there's some very interesting and complicated human characters in it. It's not just an adventure, but it does. It, there's no question there's a big mystery thriller component to it, very Dan Brown. But um, but you know, the reason I wanted to do it uh, is because, well, two things, actually. I, I, you know, Embarrassing confession. We were about to shoot. I knew they were going to shoot in places that cameras have never been and the public have never seen. In fact, right. really, in some places, literally, the public have never been and seen. They've never been seen by anybody before, apart from the people in the authorities. Um and that there was a real complicated challenge, human being making some difficult choices at the heart of it. So I knew I'd get to do all the stunts and there's, you know, there's a ton of running and chasing and cars and girls and sex and whatever, all the kind of, all, all the kind of classic action adventure stuff. But at the heart of it is a very interesting man with some very interesting stuff going on in himself personally. It's a story about faith and fanaticism at the heart of it. And that was a, the, ultimately the thing that intrigued me. It's nice to have not just the story of about some really uh, terrible is happening, the end of the world is at stake, but to have this kind of treasure hunt adventure along yeah. oh, with no, it. There's definitely, there's things, there's stuff, to, you know, it's like, uh, there are clues and there are things you can look for and when it gets to the end, nobody is quite what they seem. Right. Like, well, these new layers are discovered all the time uh, and there'll be people home go, hey, I knew that and people, other people go, no, you didn't, you didn't say anything last week. Uh, <laughs> but I, I get the scripts and I, I'd open and i go, fuck, you're kidding me about some character I knew or worse, there'd be some actor I'd be getting close to having a lovely time being friendly with and then and then suddenly they drop down dead or be killed or stabbed or whatever. So, you know, the, the, the body count piles up too. And from the parts that I've seen, you can't tell, is this uh, some kind of, uh, you know, religious biblical kind of thing? Is it some kind of terrorism thing? Is it the Illuminati? Like there's all kind of things at play that you think you got, like you just said, you got to grasp on it and then all of a sudden, no, I was wrong. So they, they pull the rug out from under you often. I mean, one of the things that happened when I first went to meet them uh, and say, I, this is an amazing script, I, you know, thanks for asking me. Uh, I wanted to know where they got the ideas from. Right. And they looked at each other, because I was complimenting them this the kind of crazy imaginative things they came up with, and they looked at each other as if they were deciding whether to tell me or not, and they went, actually, we didn't make any of it up. We got it all from the newspapers and the Bible. And so there are real groups out there, maybe listening to this right now, <laughs> But there's certainly real groups. Out this there. may be the last time yeah. anyone hears from you. But there are real groups out there who are working towards the end of days. There are, you know, people with substantial resources, people sitting in elected office in this right. country and other places around the world, who are not secret about the fact that they'd be very happy for most people on the planet to die so that the world could be reborn with whatever Messiah in the way that they think it should be. And and I'm hoping that there are FBI agents like the one I play. Uh, who are as tough and cool and determined and dogged as the guy I am on screen who are keeping us safe in our beds because it's a spooky, scary world. Um, you got to shoot this show in Jerusalem, Croatia, and here in the States. And New Mexico. In New oh, Mexico. Yeah, in Albuquerque and all the surrounding extraordinary. We're in caves and we're on mountains and we're on the rooftops. Yeah, that's what I was just going to ask tunnels, you about, yeah. about uh, going into the caves and stuff. How many of those caves were the... Were they the uh, the off limit parts for where you can't go uh, tourism? Well, there were numbers of places that, that tourists aren't allowed that we were in with film crews, uh, not be, not for political reasons, but because they're just they're private. You know, then they are uh, private. Uh, is somebody owns them? No, or? they're too delicate. Like if you know, if, fall if apart. Tourists, they fall apart. I mean, there was one place we were in tunnels uh, in Jerusalem, uh, and uh, I said, "What's this charcoal on the wall?" As I ran my finger down it, and they said, "Well, that's actually." Um, for, it's 2,000 years old. That's where the Romans burnt all the Jewish women and children alive during the rebellion when they were hiding down here. And you could oh, run your finger geez. down and have your fingers. But also there were places in Albuquerque, you know, the national monuments that they don't allow the public into. Obviously, we had to make promises that we wouldn't damage it. We didn't. In Croatia, we're in these 65 million-year-old caves with stalactites and stalagmites that were just, I mean, beggared belief. And it looked like a set. It frankly looked like a Harry Potter set or a Star Wars set, but these were real places. And uh, How hot were they? They were freezing cold. I mean, so freezing The Croatian cold. ones. Oh, my God. Well, all the caves were cold. I was naked a lot of the time, or semi-naked. I'm injured, or I don't want to say what's happening. But, there's, <laughs> you know, whatever. There's some sex and wounding and whatever. Stuff happens uh, that's interesting. Uh, but I'm running around. The crew are dressed like they're about to assault Everest, to the east side of Everest. Me, I'm running around in half a T-shirt and a thong. And uh, so it was colder for me than it was for them. But there's some icy, icy times down there. And also, we all got sick. I've still got a rumbling from God only knows what 65 million year old spores are doing to my body. What else did you get to see that the public normally wouldn't get a chance to look at? Well, I mean, 
to be shooting across the rooftops of Jerusalem when the sun comes up at dawn and you see the light bounce off that famous gold dome and hear the call to prayer. And then you see these tiny streets. I mean, the whole of Jerusalem is small. The, the bit that our story is about, the Temple Mount, is you know smaller than 30 rock. You know, the, to, ha- to see the Muslims and the Hasidic Jews and the Ethiopian Christians and the Greek Orthodox all wake up and share the same alleyways and be buying bread from the same bakery uh, uh, in the morning was a magical, timeless thing. And so there are numbers of things like that, and, and caves and tunnels and the problem is, if I tell you, I'll give away some of the locations, which right. I can't do, because one of the great pleasures of, of reading this and being in it and for the audience will be that you're continually surprised. So I was about to mention a location. If I said it, it would fuck up the story quite badly. So. But anyway, there are, there, are, there are things you see, and you get a flavor of what it's like to be in, uh, in a different part of the world with a different... I mean, Jerusalem is a different part of the world. <laughs> Excuse me. There's that cave rumble. <laughs> Jerusalem is a different part of the world. From Israel, it's a different part of the world from 2015. Right. I mean, it's just like stepping back in a, a rip in the fabric of time. Going through those uh, those tombs and those caves in Jerusalem, besides the fact that they're delicate and, and some may be dangerous, uh, were there any areas that were difficult to get permission for because of any kind of uh, uh, religious implications? No, or? no, no. I mean, the mayor of Jerusalem was, was completely backing the project. And, uh, and the th- what's interesting is that anybody who has objected or, or, or wor- started to make noise about objecting to our show hasn't read the script because it's not about the current Israeli-Palestinian conflict at all. It's about much more ancient and much more deep uh, and possibly dangerous conflicts, if that's possible. Um, no, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't uh, a problem to get access. But what... The experience we took away from it, or I know that it's true for the other actors, whether or not they have any kind of religion, I think I'd probably say, safely say that nobody in the cast is religious in any way. Um, but I know I'm not. Is Whatever you do or don't believe in, we're in places where the stones are just humming with history and passion and obsession. I mean, we're in the cave where from which they cut the stone. You can see the, the cut marks of all to build the temple, to build the first, second, and third temples. And, and, and so... Every civilization there's ever been, or certainly for thousands of years, has conquered this place or wanted to conquer this place and slaughtered untold millions of people to get to this place and keep hold of it. And you're, some, you're so aware of it in the streets there. You're so aware that this is the street that Christ walked up, whether he was the son of God or just some tro- local troublemaker. That's the street he walked up and that's where his bones are buried. And that the entire world, it's, it, they say that the ley lines cross in this place. And... Uh, more than any political or geographical conflict, you're just aware that the world's passions are focused in this one place, and it's like you can bottle it. It's in the air. It's, it's really extraordinary. What was security like while you were shooting this project? Jerusalem does get its fair share of uh, you know terroristic it threats. It does. No, no, it does. There's no question. Look, we're, we're making a show about the Temple Mount. The Temple Mount is this place where there's you know, the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque up top, and there's the Wailing Wall at the, you know, at the bottom, and there's contested land underneath it, and the intifadas broke out just because somebody went for a walkabout there, or Sharon went for a walkabout. And even since we wrapped and moved to Croatia, um, there's been a lot of incidents there. This is the place where, if the world does go down in flames, the spark is coming from this tiny, tiny piece, you know, 200 square meters. And for us, it, actually, we were welcomed. I mean, we would be shooting places at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning in, in, in parts of uh, Arab-Israeli you know, uh, villages or something, and they would come out and bring us cups of tea and biscuits, you know, mint tea and stuff. People were incredibly friendly and welcoming. And we had numbers of Arab-Israelis on the crew as well and in the cast. And so it, there really was no uh, controversy about where we were shooting, what the security was. Whether there was... I mean, we left the country. Uh, well, there was always a planned hiatus after we shot the pilot, and these terrible, this terrible conflict broke out in Gaza. Uh, and whether it would be the same going back or not, I don't know. We didn't go back. We then ended up shooting in Croatia and Albuquerque, partly because of that, partly because you needed to be able to control the streets. You needed, we needed to shoot right. places where we could really take over the whole location. You can't do that in the old market and stuff in Jerusalem. Um, but it might be a different place now. And when we were there, everyone was very welcoming. So never at any point did you feel like, now nah, something's not right with this situation here, or, or today well, feels a little weird that we're not going to shoot here? The whole city feels weird and tense uh, a lot of the time. That's why we're making the show about it. I mean, you know, there's a reason to, me- to set the show in, in the most controversial piece of real estate in the history of the world. Uh, and if you're not uh, tuned into that, and you don't have a sense that that happens, uh, then you're, you're pretty dumb when you're there. The show is called Dig. It's an event, as we're calling it. Uh, it'll be Thursdays at 10 p.m. on the USA Network here. How many episodes are we looking at? There's 10. The first one is an hour and a half, 
and then there's an hour long episode. All and ten done. Yeah, but don't look down. I mean, don't be don't be on your phone at the same time, but don't go to the bathroom. You've got to watch this thing. You've got to pay attention. All it's going to be very difficult for a lot of people. Well, they're going to have to uh, hold it or t- have a big empty plastic bottle in front of them. And Hayes is in this project as well. There's a lot of great actors. In fact, we've got a lot of great American actors in it. And we have the cream of Israeli actors uh, and uh, Israeli Arab actors. Uh, Lauren Ambrose well, is in there as well, yeah. Yeah, Lauren Ambrose is in this. And, uh, and, uh, in fact, there's, there's so many people. Alison Sudol's in it, who is a very successful singer, songwriter, but just coming into her own as an actress. Um, but there are also people who can't walk down the street in Israel. I mean, just, you know, the, the biggest celebrities and best actors in Israel. And it was interesting for them to be in places, to be in Albuquerque and be in Croatia where nobody knows who they are. And the joy for them, I think, to be able to just get on with their job. How are you as far as being recognized in these locations? Nobody. Oh, I don't get recognized anywhere. I don't get recognized <laughs> walking down the street. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm one of those people that becomes someone else on screen. And in my own life, uh, I'm just wallpaper. And uh, I, I go to Ralph's and I get the subway and nobody knows who I am. Outside of this project here, you've also had a, an amazing body of work playing Lucius Malfoy in the uh, Harry Potter movies and Awake as well, which I, I loved watching. It was Thank an you. interesting show on NBC. It didn't last long and i don't know why where you were playing a guy that was in a car accident and you would drift between two realms well he didn't he he came to from the car accident and his wife had died tragically and his son was alive and every time he closed his eyes he'd immediately wake up in a world where his son was alive and his wife had died did i say that or the or whatever yeah it would would change back and and forth and uh one of the odd things about it being a british person is that it was brilliantly written and and that each episode was dense and and fabulous to watch and and he'd solved he was a detective it solved two crimes and each world would kind of bleed into each other is that we made 12 hours of it, and, and I thought all 12 episodes were, were great and interesting and emotional. And so in England, that's a huge success. But in America, if you don't run for six, seven, right. ten seasons, it's regarded as a failure. For me, that's a triumph. To make 12 great hours of television that people even now are still uh, discovering and liking on Netflix. Uh, you know, Well, that, that, that's, that's another question I have for you. That's when okay. the show ended, I thought... It just ended without being no, finished. No, I didn't realize all the episodes had aired. Yeah. But do you think I mean, they wanted to do? Obviously, the people who made it, the showrunners and writers, would have liked it to, to continue forever. I don't think you can really make a show where you ask the audience every week which which one of these worlds is real without bringing it to a close at some point right. and giving it a conclusion. Because I just don't think you can keep that going forever. But then half the shows on TV, I, I'm amazed still on. So what do I know? Well, do you think that the show would have done better had it not been on NBC? Like yeah. if it was, um, say, if it was an HBO series or FX or, or yeah. even a Netflix exclusive? Uh, well, many of those places, it doesn't really matter how many people watch. What matters is, is it talked about to the critics like it? You know, But it's also how people, people are conditioned because people will watch a HBO show or something on Netflix now and think everything that comes out out there everybody will watch it whether it's good or bad yeah. just because that's how they're conditioned now. that's true but you know look at shows like uh, shows like Mad Men if they're on uh, the traditional broadcast networks will be cancelled because their ratings are much much lower right but it doesn't matter but what they're after a certain demographic and they're also are they it wins all these awards and it makes people talk about AMC and tune into them and thank you very much and on Netflix sorry that thank you very much if someone just gave me a drink uh, I didn't just have a Tourette moment um, but uh, <laughs> But when you're on Netflix or Amazon or Showtime or HBO, it doesn't really matter how many people watch. What matters is, is it a show that is in the ether? Are people talking about it? Is it making people subscribe? Right. And, and that, I think, will be the future because it's, it's going to be very hard to sustain advertising-led television when so many people don't like watching commercials. Well, I think Dig will fall into that category because... I knew I was going to interview you, and then I saw the big trailer on USA, and I'm watching it. I'm like, this looks awesome, and then you show up, and I'm like, oh, wait, I'm talking to that guy soon. So I'm like, you already got me before I even oh, realized that you. was your Look, project. It's got, I mean, you know, and without uh, the danger of sounding like a snake oil salesman, it's got everything, and then it's got adventure and action and mystery and exotic locations and sex and uh, emotional stuff. But whether people turn up and find it, I hope. I hope people turn up in huge numbers and watch it, because it's very, very enjoyable, and I get to keep doing my job, but... But uh, how that happens, uh, I don't know. And how we, into the future we continue to bring audiences to find good stuff, I don't know. I only have a few more minutes with you, and uh, then you have to go. But uh, I did want to talk to you about, you're one of the actors that has a voiceover career doing animation and video games. Yeah. Because not a lot of people get that, get that that uh, you know opportunity stuff. to do so. Yeah, what's that like for yourself? It's great. I love it. You got uh, you don't have to put you know a bunch of makeup on and shiz your hair about and you don't care what you're wearing and you can have food stains on you and you know. Well, let me you ask you this: pimple on the end of your nose, it's all great. <clears throat> Anybody, Plus, I get to play things that don't look like me. Right. I mean, I was in you know uh, Avatar: Last Airbender, and I'm playing. Colonel Zhao. I don't look like a Colonel Zhao. No, not you do not. People. But also, you were also in uh, one of my favorites, uh, Batman Under the Red Hood. Right, right. right. And uh, you did the, the Green Lantern uh, animation and, uh, oh, Star Wars Rebels. So, um, you did that as well. the Inquisitor in Star Wars Rebels. Right. 
He has a very cool uh, lightsaber, which they showed me only after I recorded it. I mean, I would I would have signed up on the street. Did they the give you one? Then. No, no, no. I don't think it's out yet. But oh, damn it. Just like Lucius Malfoy <laughs> has a fantastic cane right. wand, the best wand, I think, in Harry Potter, uh, the Inquisitor has the best lightsaber in all of the Star Wars series. It spins. It's a kind of like a propeller. Well, let me ask you this, because anybody who does uh, voiceover and animation stuff, I always ask, and it's always 50-50. Do you get to voice your stuff with the rest of the crew, or do they have you in a closet and you do it separately, and then you see how they piece it when they're done? Uh, well, with Star Wars Rebels, we were all in the room. And um, when I did a little piece in uh, Cars 2 for John Lester, which is a you know unbelievable privilege, and that was just me by myself. Uh, and most voiceovers are you by yourself, and it's frustrating. Uh, Avatar the, was always by yourself. Um, but it's nicer when it's up with other people because then you get the timing off. It depends whether it's drawn first. That's the truth as well. Sometimes with the Pixar stuff, it wasn't animated. They did basic animation, and they take your voice, and then they animate to it. Um, with a lot of uh, other stuff, they've already animated so. They, they just want a particular line, and there's less room for improvisating. So there's a vague answer. Who knows? Depends on the project. As long as you're having fun with it. I love it. And maybe you get an action figure or somewhere also, down the line. Nice about, I'll tell you the great thing about doing voiceover work is maybe like your job. I come in, I do an hour or two, and that feels like a whole day's work to me, and I can just do nothing the rest of the day and pretend to myself I've done a full day's work. How great is that? You being from England, i got to ask you, um, where are you with Doctor Who and Black Mirror? Uh, I love Doctor Who. I know I, I, my friend directed the pilot, Keith Burke, directed the very first one, and I remember him saying to me... With Chris Eccleston? With or, Chris okay, Eccleston, the yeah. reboot, yeah. And uh, I remember seeing him somewhere, I've not seen him for a long time, and I said, what are you doing? He went, mm, Doctor Who. And I said, what? He said, Doctor Who. I said, they're redoing Doctor Who? He said, yeah. And I, I will confess now that me and a whole generation of my friends, I mean, numbers of actors who you might or may not have heard of, who are all the same age, we all got the phone call. And they said, uh, listen, they're redoing Doctor Who, what do you think? And we all went, you're out of your mind, that's never going to work. And boy, do we all feel stupid now. It's bigger. Yeah, it's fantastic. <clears throat> it's bigger than it ever was. And the, the writing is brilliant. Those writers are really let off the leash to do basically whatever they want. Cover any subject in the world that interests them, but through the prism of this science fiction. Do you like Peter Capaldi as the new Doctor? I think Peter's fantastic. I thought all of them were great. Did you have that weird transition? Uh, I, from, I hate uh, them all to start with. I hated them all to start with. Yeah. I love Tennant. That's the lie. When Chris left, and I was at drama school with Chris, and I thought, oh, I wonder if he's got, he's got such passion and intensity, but he's not, he's not that funny, I didn't think. And David Tennant came along and was instantly very comic. Reminded me of Sylvester McCoy, who did it uh, years ago. And then when they changed to Matt Smith, I went, oh, too young. I did the grumpy old, yeah, yeah. oh, too young. But then Matt Smith won me over completely. And uh, and the same with Peter. It took me an episode to go, oh, I don't actually... Well, I was British. just asking about Peter because of uh, his infamous character is Malcolm Tucker. Yeah, yeah. So seeing well, him waiting, make that transition, uh, you're like, I'm not... Re oh, no, okay, now I'm getting Peter's it. Right. Peter's an Oscar-winning uh, director. You know, He directed a short called It's Wonderful Life, Franz Kafka. And he just did something for the History Channel, too, uh, for uh, Da Vinci. He's a brilliant, brilliant director. So I, I only, my only, the only sad thing about watching him play Doctor Who is I, thought, I wonder if he'll get to direct again. Do you want to be in it? Uh, in Doctor Who, they did offer me something recently, and I, I, I just couldn't leave my kids again. I, I, just, I, I'm, I will do something. I've something now moved, somewhere down the line. I've now moved back to London. Uh, from Los Angeles, and I just didn't want to leave my kids alone. But now I'm in England. I'm happy to go down to Cardiff. I'd love to be in it. Yeah. My, mostly, my kids would love me to be in it. They were too young to enjoy the Harry Potter. Room. I would love you to be in it. Well, thanks for do it for me. <laughs> uh, Black Mirror, where do you are you fan of know. that? I'm doing. I mean, I've been eight months. I've been shooting Dig in in the remotest locations in the world, so I, I've barely had my definitely want to check that out. All it's right. their new version of the Twilight Zone. It's right, right. it's insane, and I think it's better than anything the Twilight Zone could have ever reached. There's some phenomenal telly coming out of Britain at the moment. Really, I'm a I'm a big a, as they call it Anglophile, I guess, right. but. Um, all and the, not just stuff that the BBC disappear. puts out, but I, I'm a big fan of British television for many, many years. So, And I always see a lot of the shows that you guys put out somewhere down the line within a year to two. Is, right. There's the American version. Well, not always. I mean, the Broadchurch thing didn't quite work, did it? But it's because it's such a culturally specific story uh, and that particular type of town everybody knows. And it's, a, you know, you'd be better off to reboot by just reimagining, taking a rough idea. But right. I don't think you can hew too closely to things that are, are culturally specific. But some of the stuff works brilliantly. Did you see Low Winter Sun on AMC? No, I have not seen that one. Which is a brilliant British TV series, but it was only four parts and, and making a longer series was tough. I thought that was great. There's a series called Cracker. Uh, that Robbie Coltrane did that I urge people to find in which he was this gig amazingly obese, overweight, alcoholic, misogynist, misanthropic, uh, racist, homophobic police psychologist. But he solved very controversial crimes every week. But he was really unpleasant to everybody. And they remade it for American television. And it was exactly the same, except that he wasn't fat and didn't drink and didn't hate women and wasn't homophobic and wasn't racist and, so, and didn't smoke. So the show died. And now they're making Backstrom 
what I think is being beautifully done by Rain Wilson and written by Hart Hansen. I would urge people to watch it on Fox. It's really good. And he is all those things that Cracker should have been. He is deeply scabrous, and they never apologize for how horrible, how deeply unpleasant that man is. It's great, really great television. Is this one of those rare instances where the American version is better than the British? When they remade Cracker, they did it all wrong. And now, years later, Hart has adapted the oh, Swedish okay. thing, and saying. it's what Cracker should have been. You know, is, did you watch Olive Kittredge? I not all of it, I but thought, I did. I, I wasn't. I thought going to be my cup of tea. It's not the kind of you Bill know, Murray was that, very good in it. But uh, but she was so unapologetic throughout the whole. She never tried to curry favor with the audience, and it was brilliant. And TV does that so rarely, and, and it, I, it was fantastic. I thought. Well, Mr. Isaacs, I'm out of time here. Uh, the show is called Dig. It's an event series on USA Thursdays at 10 p.m. Check it out, and also set your DVR to watch this. No, don't set your DVR. Sit there and watch it. Fuck the DVR. Some people work. No. They can watch it the next day. Watch you have three days. It counts. Okay, if you DVR it, make sure you watch it. With yeah, of course. Days. You watch it that night well, or the will, next morning before you go to work. I will come and find you. You're also Jason Folly on Twitter? At Jason's Folly. Jason's yeah. Folly on Twitter. Mr. Isaacs, thank you so much for your time. Thanks very much for having me. Take care. Bye. That's funny. Yes, thank you to Jason Isaacs. Uh, we're running out of time here. Also, thank you to uh, Zachary Quinto. Yes. Uh, the slap on NBC is still going on, so check out that. Uh, Giddles on uh, Twitter and Instagram, it's Giddlebase, right? G Giddlebase, that's right. And uh, Matt, do you have anything you want to plug here? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, GeekStuffOG, for all sorts of random stuff. And of course, uh, BKGeekStuff.com for the podcast that I'm part of each week, where we get to talk about more nerdy shit than we get to hear sometimes. Ooh. With a lot more time to go really in depth. Really in depth sometimes. Uh, and uh, I'm Erock Radio on Twitter and Instagram, so uh, follow, check all that stuff out, and uh, tell two friends if you can about the show. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, the replay, now that we're two hours, is Saturdays, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. So if you missed it here live and want to hear it again, uh, sort of live, uh, Saturdays, 8 o'clock. It's always available on SiriusXM On Demand. That's right. Uh, go to the website or the app. Most people have the app. And it, uh, when it works, <laughs> when it works, it's uh, been working pretty good. The lately streaming, for me, at least. I think there was an incident this week, or uh. or no, last week during our show, the the app kind of crapped the bed uh. while we were on. But uh, it's all up there on demand. You can find all that stuff. Next week, will we we will be back at seven p.m. Eastern, yes. four p.m. on the West Coast, and uh, we'll have some celebrity guests, and we'll have a special guest. Ooh, and that's all I'm saying. Oh, okay. How special? Very special. Ooh. And uh, till next time, be seeing you. And that's all the time we have. Follow Eric on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.